Well, happy Friday, Friday to everybody out there. My Lord, my camera is way up close in my face. Holy smokes. Good to uh, be here with you. That is way too close. What in the world? Oh, boy. We're going to have to fix that, aren't we? Yeah, we are. I gotta, I'm gotta. i going to turn it around or something. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> look, look right at my nose. We'll just, I'll put it on Ben here. Yeah, put it on Ben. Solo look shot how handsome ben. ben looks today. Looking good. Hi, Benjamin. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's good to be here with you guys on a Friday, Friday. And uh, the mood is light and airy and fun. In here this morning, certainly. Mostly because there was no... Uh, I missed having a game last night, certainly. But, you know, no crushing defeat or Sander Bogart's off the hook for another day at least. Man, we spent a lot of time talking about that guy yesterday. More than I would have liked, uh, to be honest with all of you. But it's great to be here with you on a Friday. Last show of the week for us. Uh, I'm Woodsy. Paul Rindle is literally hovering over my shoulder trying to get the uh, the camera dialed in. Because it, we are also on YouTube. You may be listening on your radio, radio going, I don't know what you're talking about. We're also on YouTube. You can watch it there. A lot of people in the chat already, which is incredible. Thank you guys for being here. And uh, Ben Higgins is your friendly neighborhood sports anchor. He joins us as well. Good morning to you. Good morning. I woke up today and you know, grabbed the phone to see what happened in the five hours I was asleep. As And usually it's not that much. But there was so much Taylor Swift talk yeah. on my timeline this morning. Yeah. Like... Okay. An insane amount of Taylor Swift talk. Apparently, she dropped a new album last night, but then... Yeah, double album. Then she dropped another album, essentially. Nice to like be... Two two times the number of songs. Nice to be so prolific that you just have, like, just loads of songs that are done and ready to go. And then you're like, here's an album. And then you're like, ha, here's another album. It's like, it's incredible, actually. She's... Uh, She's a very talented human being. I was talking to Polly about it uh, off the other this morning. I, I saw the same thing that you did when I woke up, Ben. And I got in the car, and I said, I'm going to listen to some of it. And I listened to the first track she did with Post Malone, and I said, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And I told Polly, because she sounds a little bit like Lana Del Rey. And I said, I like, I really like female singers a lot. And I, I really like when they jam a bunch of words into their lyrics. Like, I was standing on the street next to the spotlight and looking, and I'm like, I like that. I, I like the, it's very poetic to You're me. You're very Ben-like this morning. I, a lot of likes, yeah. But there's you, a, you wish Bernie Taupin wrote all the uh, the lyrics for the women. He loves to jam lots of words lots in of for words Elton. In, and I just thought to myself, uh, I said, I like the, um, the cadence of it, and that words are very important to me. They are. And I so I, I just was like, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So I listened to it coming in. And Pauline and I talked about how she's a little bit caught in between having to, not having to, but catering to a very young crowd, but also an older crowd of of 40-year-old women, 45-year-old women, and men too, whatever. Like, right. she's kind of in between. So she's, she can do the love songs, the yearning songs, but she also needs to be, you know, has to stay, keep her pop sensibility. At this point, I think she's just catering to human beings yeah. now on the planet well, Earth, who seems to be she wants. She kind she of wants. the, the <clears throat> her fan base seems to be the 8 billion people on planet Earth right now. It's crazy, now. man. Crazy, And she's crazy. pretty much captured them all. And I, 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 so I listened to some of it. I'll probably listen to some more uh, later. But a prolific uh, artist, certainly. I mean, just no shortage of, of material. I'm not, you know, you're the music uh, expert in the in the crew, but anytime I've ever heard a artist talk, they say, like, writing a song, so very difficult. If you To do a good one, yeah. To and write a good he, one. And yet, she's kind of, how many did she drop yesterday? 30? Right. I you know, know the final count. Well, songs. And you got to think, too, there's 60 that she went to choose from. And you know she, what I mean? And, like, and, they're done. And I, I Those would, are the 30 her best Her standards, ones. I think, are pretty high. She's not so gonna. Too. She's not going to put something out if she doesn't feel good about it. Like, this is terrible, but I just need to fill out the last song or two. <clears> she must feel pretty good about all of them. Yet, seems like she's also a busy person doing lots of other things as well, like touring and dating, you know, dating and Travis Kelsey and flying to Chiefs games. Yet I feel like she somehow balances she had, it well. Yes, I. she's an overachiever. Well, She's it, an overachiever. You think about that life that she has and that many people, you know, nobody's at her level really as far as stardom goes. That's I think it's a fair statement. Um, no one's really at that level. And you think about how many people have their hand out. You think about how many people she has to worry about Make sure, you know, and she's really good about that, too. I, I respect her a lot. It's not for a 48-year-old man. It's really not. The music is really not made for me. But 
she has her head on straight, in my opinion. And like I've I've said it before, what she did for record stores during the pandemic to help keep them afloat is something to be lauded, admired. The the most I mean, you can walk into the the seediest record store and the guy is behind the counter and he's like he's in his descendant shirt and he's punk rock till he <laughs> dies. And they were all so effusive with their praise of Taylor Swift for sending them signed copies of records that they could sell during to keep them them afloat. And I just thought that was the coolest, most thoughtful thing to do. And how she takes care of her people, it, employees, and people who work on her tours it, it's pretty amazing. And Roro in the chat says, well, "Stick to sports for real, please." I do think there's a <laughs> lesson here for everybody, including. Superstar athletes, you know, who... What are we supposed to talk about some, right now? Because if I'm somebody curious, tells me to yesterday. stick to sports again, I'm, <laughs> nothing, I'm going to Nothing happened I'm yesterday, but... Let's get into the NHL. What is also Let's amazing go. is you hear the stories, you know, when she shows up at a Chiefs game or something and how down-to-earth she still is. Yeah, the sports, the Despite Chiefs. being the biggest star are on you planet ready Earth. For the <laughs> <laughs> Despite being the biggest star on planet Earth, that she's remained a... Fairly down to earth, normal person. She hasn't gotten weird like so many pop stars tend to do yeah. when they're, you know. And I can understand when you're constantly in the spotlight. It's and weird. It's a little contradictory because I am not a fan of Travis Kelsey. Never have been. Yeah. Not. Uh, yeah, you don't like him. My opinion hasn't changed because they started dating. Not a fan. But if she's happy, great. Power to her. And it's been cool to see her, who somebody who has, like, for all the reasons you just listed, how, her stardom, how big it is. She's going to Coachella. She's going to football games. Yeah, she's sitting in luxury God. boxes. But, like, well, well, she's living, a, not normal, but she's living more out of her hidden cave than she was. I complained about having to do stuff. I can't even imagine what that life's like. It's just like You don't want I that level what? of thing. I gotta do What? Where do I have to go? What is, she, uh, is she a billionaire? Like, I, it's not worth it. Yeah. It's it's good. It's good. I mean, it's good. I listened to, like I said, I listened to a few tracks this morning and uh, also saw a couple of tweets coming out. People that we know, our buddy Eno Saris, who we had on yesterday, he didn't even mention he was in Las Vegas uh, yesterday when we had him on. And he was. He was in Las Vegas for the Fish Spear Residency. And I saw some video come out of that and I went... <laughs> Holy cow. Now, the, I went to the U2 one. The visuals for that were <laughs> stupid good. It's the best night of my life. I mean, truly. It was like the best, other than my kids being born and all that garbage. It was the best <laughs> night of my life, being at that show, seeing what I saw, feeling like I felt. It was, there was nothing like it. I saw these visuals last night. I go, I don't even like fish, and I want to go. Staggering. Staggeringly incredible, knowing everyone in that place is like, Eyes just bugged you, out of their I completely minds. forgot that was this weekend that they were launching the residency. I went, you said something. I went and pulled it up on YouTube this morning before the show. It looked it's stupid, unbelievable. Dude. It's stupid. Stupid. Like, I felt like I was tripping Wait, just by watching You're it. You're going to Vegas. Henderson. 30 minutes. <laughs> it's a 30-minute drive. Ben at Fish. Ben at Fish would be the greatest thing of all time. If I was going to copy Eno at all, he also tweeted that he went to uh, Emerald's Delmonico Steakhouse for dinner, which I've, I've said before, Shelly, uh, one of our favorite restaurants of all time that we went to at least three or four times when we went to Vegas early in our early in our uh, romance, and it was just, it's always fantastic. Yeah. So it's, fun. It's, uh, it, the, the, the place looks incredible. So if you get to... If you get to uh, the chance to go to that, have have fun and and really uh, please drink it in. We had a great day yesterday. Um, we had a great day yesterday. We had the uh, the roundtable, and um, you've heard it a couple of times uh, on the station since. If you missed it, you can go back and watch it. I like that's the thing is I know I I like tongue in cheek kind of complain about it, but I actually have a good time doing the roundtable. I'm just tired. But I really like getting to hang with Tony Gwynn Jr. and Craig and Annie and Ello. We had a good time. We had a good conversation yesterday. Uh, Jocelyn said somebody somebody assault, somebody was commenting on me talking about my family during the roundtable yesterday. I didn't see that because I don't have access to the chat. Jocelyn says she took care of it. So thank <laughs> you for that. I think I mentioned I mentioned my son one time. I said, Bo Woods likes Bo Bichette. I think How that's all you? I said. How dare I, you? I, I'm so tired of people that I can't even... I can't even impart to you, Polly, how tired I am of that garbage. 
So I'll say it. Just, I needed to hear for the 69th time your thoughts on yeah, Xander Bogarts. Where and the he should hit. Spot. Yeah, where spot. the load off. The load off. I like spot. that. Hit load off <laughs> today. Um, it's just like, <laughs> it's just like I said before, I'm going to talk about my family. It, and if that's the worst thing you can say about me, put it on my tombstone at the end of the day. I love them. They're great and they're hysterical. So talk I don't, about them all you want. I don't understand that bit. Talk really, about, stop worrying about it. Just talk about them whenever you feel I like talking about them. I can't just stab somebody, though, you that says it. Stand, but I'd like anyone, to. But you can talk about it whenever you want. Good I thought the Lord. highlight of the roundtable was Tony Gwynn Jr.'s absolute hardline stance against superstition. Don't know that I've ever seen a baseball player take a harder line stance. It's so we, nice. we were talking about no, you know, can you mention the no hitter? And Tony Gwynn Jr. absolutely, like, went into, he was almost angry at people who would even give it any credence at all. Yeah. And he said, I was, it was tough. I was in the booth with Bob. He was kind of dancing around it. And I had to, I wanted to be respectful, but I don't believe in any of that. You should be always saying it. I, he said, what stunned me, even the, the very common superstition, like you get a hit, you know, that bat, you're going to keep using that bat. If it's got some hits in it, you're going to keep doing it. He goes, Never cared. I used a different bat every every mm. at bat, even if I just hit a double with it the time that, before. That is the which, by the way, and I, I I let him know that in and of itself is a superstition. You switching your bat after you barrel a double in the gap is a superstition, straight up. Like <laughs> that's a superstition. Now, you may not look at it that way, but it absolutely is a it's a process that you go through. Just to, you're so anti superstition that you develop a superstition. What would be non superstitious? Like you've got a, you got like seven or eight bats in there, and you truly just grab one without yeah. ever thinking about which one it is. Correct. Every time. That's that's no superstition. That's non superstitious. Yeah, and I I thought it was funny. We asked him about jumping over the white line, and he said, <laughs> "No, no, I dragged my toe across it." Said, and no, we said, no, "No, you didn't." He goes, "No, I jumped over it." Why? Because everybody else did. <laughs> you know, like, and that was my whole point yesterday on superstitions. You don't want to be the guy. Like, if you want to be the guy that that people think jinxed it, then that's on. That's you. not necessarily superstition. That's just keeping a low profile. Keeping a low pro. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it, it, we really had a great time. It's it's exhausting. It's exhausting, but it's it's really a fun uh, thing that we do. So. Hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll have another one for you next Thursday. Now, that one's going to be a little different. Benny's going to be out. Tony's not going to be there. So, Annie's hosting. So, me, oh God. Annie, Poor Annie, me, Annie, Craig. Elston, and Ella. Ella yeah. Oh, boy. Who's going to have a more difficult job? Annie wrangling all of you clowns yep. next Thursday or Ernie Johnson having to corral Shaq, Charles Barkley on a weekly basis? I mean, that show gets off the rails, and Ernie has I to think just... Ernie. Yeah, I think Ernie. <laughs> I modeled myself a little bit after Ernie. And you do a he good does, job. He does such a good job. Uh, I always respect Ernie. Hannah's going to come co-host with us on Thursday, I think, hang out. Sweet. Can she be part of the roundtable as well? She just said, I can, if you want. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Again, you I have to host that day and then do the roundtable. I'm done. Uh, your boy is just toast. Ben's going to be in Vegas. Hopefully you get a chance to go out. Henderson. And... Henderson. <laughs> He keeps reminding me that it's Henderson because he doesn't. Where is like, Henderson? 30 minutes from Las Suburban Vegas. Suburban Las Vegas. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I want you and Scott to go to fish. They're not going to fish. Please go to fish. Why? Neither Why do you of hate? us are fish people at all. It doesn't matter. Have you seen the sphere? <laughs> I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Do something fun. He's already been to the sphere. He went to you too. Oh, he did. Yeah, he yeah. did. He's been to the sphere. All right. Fine. All right, we'll set the menu when we come back. Uh, we got it's a, a shout Friday. Out, Friday. We got a shout out to his family coming up. And a very early shout out to his family on a Friday. Uh, it's all coming up next. Glad to have you with us. End of the week is here. Ben Woods, Paul in studio, uh, getting you ready for the weekend. Let's see how the traffic looks with Kelly Danick early on this Friday on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Rest in peace to the great, great Dickie Betts, one of the last two rem uh, remaining members of the Allman Brothers Band. Passed away yesterday at 80 years old, Benjamin. Passed away in Florida, surrounded by uh, friends and family. Was in no pain uh, when he went, so they say. Nobody really knows. Oh, it was so, it was so peaceful. Thanks. You have no idea. Thanks a lot for that encouraging well, thought. Well, yeah, you don't know what's going on inside somebody. No, he was fine. He was good. Just drifted <laughs> off, and it was all all fine. I, that's a big. That's a big assumption. It's a big leap to make, in my opinion. But Dickie Betts, one of the uh, one of the guys that you watch play guitar, and you go, "I'm not going to even practice anymore." What's the point of I'm practice? Good. I'm good. Like, why would I? That was a fun dream for a minute. Yeah, like I, I'm not going to try to do that. He can't. I can't do that. Right, and yeah, it's like watching Scotty Scheffler play golf. Right, and go, you're like, I'm done. It's pointless. This is stupid. It's pointless. This is stupid. Uh, Dickie Betts was just incredible, and and uh, you know, responsible for some of the Allman Brothers' biggest hits. Jessica, Ramblin' Man, heard both uh, of them yesterday. Blue Sky, and uh, just just a great, great guitar player. One of the scariest dudes in rock and roll history, <laughs> from what I understand. You know, he had some uh, drug and alcohol issues, and was pretty surly, I guess, to be around for a while. Got booted out of the band, and. Um, but yeah, 80 years old uh, when he passed. I, I, that's a that's a hell of a run for Dickie Betts. They gave him credit, at least uh, who I was listening to talking yesterday, for basically paving the way for for bands like Leonard Skinner and Southern rock. Southern Rock. Yeah. yeah, Southern Rock. So you know how we do it on this show for the family of uh, Dickie Betts. And I really hope we can see more unity and more peace when already things are so difficult. So, shout out to his family. You know who uh, would have hated David Guetta? Dickie Betts. Would have absolutely <laughs> hated David Guetta and all that that would implied him on the rooftop of that bar. I could, that I promise you. That I can say. I don't know if he died peacefully. I can say he probably would have hated David Guetta. And I, I rest, I rest pretty easy uh, thinking that man. What a yeah. He was the Ben. It was him and Dwayne Allman. Where the the kind of they would go back and forth, and then Dwayne Allman passed away, and so he's like, "Oh, cool, now I'm the guy," and he had to learn all of Dwayne's parts and all of you know his parts that he already did. Incredible, incredible band. I don't listen to enough Allman Brothers. Um, like if you passed away, I, I'd have to learn how to talk about your kids. Yeah, all the you time talk about Bo and Taylor. And, uh, yeah, exactly. Just constantly and do your part just of constant, the show as which well. Is, it's really all I contribute is just kid talk <laughs> to the show. Some guy DM me the other night and. It was on uh, Instagram. <clears throat> we had played a, a little clip, Throwback Thursday clip, last week. And he go, and it was at 9.48 or something. We were done. I mean, we're cash. We're, <laughs> we're out of material. Went to the Throwback Thursday well. And it was the one where the bird flew in the window. And we were laughing about it. It was a funny moment. And this guy lost his mind. And he's like, get back to sports, man. A bird in a window, really? I just wrote back, no. <laughs> right? At the time. And then he proceeds to go on about how... I'm an idiot, and I'm a buffoon, and he said this quote, Ben has a, a brilliant sports mind. And I went, all right. So I asked Ben yesterday, do you think you have a brilliant sports mind? What was your answer? Yes. Yes, he says. <laughs> <laughs> so, good. Um, so good. I make insightful points. Yes, you do. Spot on on my analysis. Always, always, brilliant always. Brilliant sports mind. God. But the the good news is that I'm just comparing myself to the rest of this industry, and the bar is very low. That's true. That's <laughs> true. Yeah, that's good. Very, very. Uh, yeah. Jocelyn thinks it might have been you on your burner account <laughs> on Instagram. That's a good. That would be a. That would be a I've real all scandal. Of them all along, they all thought it was Woods. It's actually me, and I enjoy tormenting Woods most of all. It wouldn't surprise me in this business. I've seen it all. And it wouldn't surprise me to find that Ben has been torturing me. Stop talking about your kids, man. <laughs> so good. I like my brilliant mind, says Ben. Uh, yeah, the uh, the menu is, you know, it's a, it's, um, it's a little light today. All right, Friday menu. Uh, obviously, we've got, uh, we had no game yesterday to talk about. We do have one coming up tonight as the Padres return home for a three-game series against the Toronto Blue Jays. And I see a lot of people pointing it out, so we will wish a happy birthday. Jackson Merrill turning 21 yeah. today. Hi, this is Jackson Merrill. Hey, Jackson. He's, uh, his quote about his birthday, they did a story on him in the UT. It's just a day. I like that kid, man. Just a day. He just wants to go play baseball and have a good night. He does not care about the birthday, does not care about 21. 
going and you know having some legal beers or anything. That's fine. It's just a day, he says. I hope and pray that the teammates around him are not going to let him think it's just a day. Force him to have some fun. Out, they're going to go out and get that dub tonight, and then they are going to rage. I That's like what that. You do. I like that kid so much, man. I really do. He is a, a really, really good kid, and his head is on straight. And that's something that you have to, you have to, you know, say. And you have to have that mentality. I mean, he, that's what he loves to do. How cool is that? What he did last night. What did you see? What he did. What Jackson Merrill did yeah. last night? No. Went out to the uh, Storm game. Yeah, I saw that. He did. Yes, oh, I saw Jerson was... Profar went down to a uh, Tijuana Toros game. So rad, Everyone's man. going to games on their off day. And then Sammy Levitt was there. Yeah, Sammy Levitt called, was there, He team. actually called the action. We got some, uh, we'll get some audio of yeah. Sammy uh, last night. Called and, the middle And innings. it was a walk-off win for uh, Dylan Head at yeah. the end of the night. Love him, on, on a On a blooper down the line. So uh, we will talk about the Padres. I no one's ever accused us, I don't think, of being too negative about the team. No. We've been accused of being too positive. Too, yes, too for cheerleaders, sure. rah rah, morning show on the flagship Bought station. Yeah, Is that. it possible, though, we are not optimistic enough about the San Diego Padres? A new piece in fan graphs is making the argument that we may need to be a little bit more optimistic about your San Diego Padres. We'll talk about that coming up. That was an interesting article. That really was. I it thought was, it was, too. It was an interesting article and definitely something we can uh, bite down on today. At 7 o'clock, we'll play Take on Woods, try to qualify a Tier 1 for a trip to Las Vegas, or if you want to visit Henderson, it's very close. It is. Yeah, while you're in Vegas. Uh, don't do this as well. Uh, in the second half of the show, we got our guests coming in. It's a Cespedes Family Barbecue Friday, brought to you by Grand Old Barbecue. Jake Mintz will be with us at 8 o'clock. And then at 8.30, we'll do an early uh, Rindle report so we can set the stage for our weekly conversation with the skipper, Mike Schilt, our manager's report at 9 a.m. this morning as uh, they return home with an 11-10 and 10 record in second place in the National League West to open the three-game series against the Blue Jays tonight at Petco Park. Now, that's one thing I don't know that we should pre... Like, I don't know that we should do the, the standings for a while, right? doesn't really matter right now. Do it, you agree? It doesn't matter, but... Not really. But there's no reason you can't keep track of it. That's true. It's that's the sportscaster in you. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Your second place, San Diego Padres. The right. fact that I Three noticed weeks. since last night, the uh, the Would Giants you call them be- the fourth place Padres. If they'd stumbled a little bit, yeah. And I fourth th- place on I, April nineteenth. I, I don't think so. I think it's if it's positive, maybe right. you say it. Yeah. Positive ish. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Well, like the Giants beat the Diamondbacks five nothing last night. They're both nine and eleven now. Got it. So the Padres are solidly, solidly in second place in second now, place. and only a game out of first place now, behind the LA Dodgers. I watched the scoreboard like a madman. I do. And I, I checked that score last night, but I really don't watch the standings yet. I'm not a big standings watcher yet, but there really point. is no point. That's why you're a brilliant. You don't uh, even know who mind. to cheer for or against at this point. <laughs> I, I know. I know. You're, you, you're, you you're hoping you, they go you 20 think you do. I want the Dodgers to do poorly, but the Dodgers could lose, and in the end, that could bite you in the butt because those wins that the teams got when they beat the Dodgers could actually yeah, be the dude. teams you're competing against if, if for they're, the playoffs. If so. the Dodgers are taking on, like, the Brewers and the Cubs and teams that you feel like maybe in that wild card hunt down the road. You just don't know. You don't know yet. So uh, you got to let it materialize a little bit more. But, yeah, we'll have some fun today. It's a Friday. It's loose. Loose it's loose. All right, we'll get, we'll get into the Padres, the optimism of surrounding this baseball team early in the season when we come back with Ben and <laughs> Woods, don't go anywhere on a Friday on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Perhaps it's just the uh, mentality of being a San Diego sports fan for so long. But you always feel like you're trying to defend your team against the national perception of sure. how bad your team must really be. And I understand, I do understand why the national perception of the Padres going into this season was pretty low. Yeah. After a disappointing year, they slashed payroll. They lost a, a ton of good pitching, including the Cy Young Award winner, arguably the best closer in the game, and, and maybe the best hitter in the game as well. If I, if that's the, though those are my bullet points, and I'm somewhere in, you know, Nashville or <laughs> Connecticut, and I am a baseball fan, and that's all I know about the Padres. So they weren't that good last year, and they lost three critical players. That's going to be one of worst teams in baseball, right? They're going to be awful. Well, I mean, and you're not even mentioning Lugo, Walker, and Martinez. You had to rebuild your entire rotation. So if you have those notes in front of you, you go, oh, yeah, this team's winning 60 games. They're starting who in center field? Right, yeah. I, is that a rookie? I fully oh. understand the national perception this time about the San Diego Padres. As do I. Now, I was hoping that... They might surprise some people, but what surprised me is that already here, 20 games in, you're starting to see some of the national perception change. And I want to get into this piece that, that came out in Fangraph yesterday about what truly the 2024 San Diego Padres are and may end up being this year. And we'll get to that right after a check of traffic here on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Well, the only problem I'm seeing at this time is a little bit of volume on the Coronado Bridge heading over to the island. But yeah, no incidents, no accidents getting in your way so far. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. This hour on 97.3 The Fan is brought to you by The Farmer's Dog. Fresh, human-grade dog food from a healthier way to more energy. When you switch your dog's food to The Farmer's Dog, the effects can feel magical. What sorcery is this? None at all. It's just real food made for the health of dogs. Get 50% off your first box at thefarmersdog.com slash radio. So uh, Leo Morgenstern, one of the writers at Fangraphs, and if you don't know Fangraphs, there are a number of analytical baseball sites that are out there. I think Fangraphs may be one of the best, if not the best, for following the sport. They constantly are putting out interesting, well-thought-out, well researched and argued pieces very, about major league baseball stuff. teams. And yeah. the headline on this one is, hey, these Padres are still pretty good. And what actually even surprised me, because they went through the whole, oh, yeah, they lost a lot in the offseason. There's no doubt about that. And it was going to be tough to replace what they lost. However, then they went through the additions, the you know the Juan Soto trade, the pitchers they picked up, and some of the other moves that that AJ made. And what really surprised me in the end is the analysis that the Padres, when you know at full strength, and that includes, by the way, Donovan Solano coming up at some point here after he finishes his extended spring training and, and maybe joining the team as a designated hitter. Fangraphs now projecting that every player in the Padres lineup will be above average offensively this season based on WRC+, plus weighted runs created, plus that they will have a lineup of nine above average hitters on the team, essentially. Except Jackson Merrill. J but they also make the point that they're working on a pretty small sample size and everything has been really encouraging about okay. Jackson Merrill. And they have him just a tick under, but they say under, absolutely yeah. based on the start – he could be an above-average player. Now, they make the argument, of course, that Jerickson Profar is probably not going to keep up his torrid pace from early in the season. However, he's off to such a hot start that even if he comes back to earth, he could still end up being an above-average offensive player this year. They also say Xander Bogarts has been well below average offensively this year, but they still project him to bounce back and, and have a decent season and finish above-average offensively. And if all their projections do come to bear that the Padres will actually be really one of the better offenses in the league. And it will come down to pitching in terms of, you know, whether or not this team can, can make the playoffs at the end of the season. And the, the note too about Xander, that was interesting. He said uh, the newly minted second baseman hitting an abysmal 200 uh, right now, 60 WRC plus again, average on WRC plus is a hundred. So if you're, at 60, that's not good. You want to be above 100. 100 is average. So um, he said if if Profar inevitably regresses by about 50 points, which is what they're projecting right now, 
you can expect Bogarts to increase by the same amount. Therefore, you know, in a, in a perfect world of projections, Ben, a wash, essentially. Like, he, one comes down to earth, one gets back going. Um, and I think all of us would sign up for that. I My hope is that Jerks and Profar just never lets his foot off the gas. And, again, no one's going to continue on on the pace that he's in, uh, that he's on right now. But holy smokes, man, like, like why not shoot for a very consistent, above-average season, which I, I don't know that I thought he was capable of until I actually watched him play this year. And now I, I think, yeah, okay, I can see that happening. And Xander, yeah, Xander needs to get it going. And if he can get his back up to where it needs to be, for sure, man. It's a, it's a more complete, balanced lineup all the way through. Now, Fangraphs uh, says here, and I'll, I'll read this directly, our playoff odds currently give the Padres – a 46.2% chance to make the postseason. And they have the third highest odds, 35.3%, to secure a National League wildcard berth, trailing only the Phillies and Diamondbacks. The race remains wide open with the Mets, Giants, and whoever doesn't win the NL Central also in the running. San Diego is only one game above 500, but at this point in the season, that's an 85-win pace. There's a lot of season left to play, but as things stand, the Padres are in pretty good shape. And that's from... Fan graphs, uh, 46.2%. That's basically a coin flip. Yep. Toss it in the air. Heads or tails about whether the Padres make the playoffs. And if it does come up, uh, you know, heads for your San Diego Padres this season and, and things continue to go fairly well, I think everybody everybody in the Padres fan base will be pretty happy to see a, a playoff appearance this year from the San Diego Padres. Yeah, and and like everything, obviously it's health dependent and you know the injury the injury bug is is rearing his head a little bit right now with uh Hugh Darvish being on the IL and of course Jake Cronenworth. I I'm you know, we're talking to Mike Shilton about 2 hours and 14 minutes. Uh and I want to ask him, you know, about the health of those guys when you can expect them back uh Jake back in the lineup certainly cuz he's not on the IL. He's he's hopefully ready to go tonight for this series and uh just a big big part of this lineup and and you know want to ask him too about about Xander and getting him going and thinking about changing the lineup and all of that uh as well. But yeah, it's always nice to see an encouraging article and there were there were I'll, I'll be honest, there were plenty of people in the media that did say yes, you lose all those great players, you lose all those innings, but We've seen this before. You know, we've seen this before. I don't want to do the addition by subtraction thing, but you've added some decent pieces. If we stay healthy, Ben, we have as good of a shot at making the playoffs as anybody because I do feel like we do have the guns to get us there. And I think it it starts with, and they start with this in the article, the guy that we really needed to be himself was Fernando Tatis Jr. Uh, After a pretty dismal second half last year, his, his WRC plus right now is 148. And that's that's where you need him to be. He is a star, and he needs to do star things. Now, just because Fangraphs says something or projects something doesn't automatically make it true, and they know that as well. But one thing that they don't know and that none of us know is the thinking inside the organization. Now, they believe that Donovan Solano is going to be a pretty decent hitter when they bring him up. Not great fielding, although they can play multiple positions. They said the only position where he's really above average is probably first base but as a designated hitter they believe that Donovan Solano is more than an adequate solution for the San Diego Padres going forward Woods do you believe that that is the plan for the Padres they signed him they haven't really said much about him other than sending him to Arizona to you know get get locked in at this point but do you think that in uh, a week a day two weeks whatever it takes that we're going to start seeing when Manny Machado's back playing third, that Donovan Solano is going to be a somewhat everyday player for the San Diego Padres. Was that why they signed him for that purpose? I would imagine uh, he barrels the baseball, and that's that's what you're really looking for. And and they've really, you know, we're maybe we're too stuck in our ways of traditional thinking, and and but I mean, we've seen Mike Schilt play matchups plenty this year. We've absolutely seen him play matchups, and they're throwing kind of that out of the window. You know, we have plenty of right-handed hitters, and that's why we all kind of were lampooning and or, uh, uh, calling for Brandon Belt, you know, a lefty hitter that that can can hit the ball in the gaps. And I, they just said they like whatever they like about Solano, probably the price is probably a little bit better than Brandon Belt right now too. But he also barrels the baseball. I don't know what his splits are or whatever, uh, righty-lefty, but 
You've got Eggie Rosario who can hit lefties if if Solano can't uh, and is better for right handed hitter uh, right handed pitching. I don't know, but I I do like that pickup. It was a sneaky good. It, one. It's just funny we spent so much time talking about a member of the late 2010s Giants as possibly being the Padres' answer at designated hitter, and yet. It was never the right one. We kept talking about Brandon Belt, and apparently A.J. Preller always seemed to have his eye on Donovan Solano as the guy who could be the answer for him from that, that same team that we remember you know, playing against in the National League West for, uh, for multiple seasons. And, and I don't know, again, what the plan is. We can ask, uh, we can ask the skipper. Uh, will we see Donovan Solano in the lineup tonight? You know, could, could happen. Right. I mean, theoretically, they, theoretically. Could, they could activate him and he could be there tonight. They have not made any moves as of yet. And as far as I know, he remains in Arizona still getting work in. But if he had been, uh, you know, staying sharp during the offseason, uh, there's no reason a veteran going to need more than a you know week or, or two yeah. to, to really get totally ready and for it was, the season. It was a week ago was, today. Yeah, yeah. Was it a week ago, a week ago today? today? I believe. So, He's had some time. Um, I'm sure they're evaluating on a daily basis to see where he's at if they're anticipating bringing him up. So, yeah, we can we can definitely ask Mike Schiltz about the Donovan Solano plan. He may defer a little bit. Yeah, well, you know, when when they send him to me, we will. That's when we'll put him in the lineup. We'll, we'll put him in, a li- in the lineup. Until then, I you know we got we got guys we like, and yeah. we're gonna we're gonna continue to roll those guys out there. But we can ask and, and see what they have to say about it. But pretty. Pretty encouraging piece for someone who's already optimistic about the San Diego Padres <laughs> just naturally. Yesterday was your Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, seriously. I was like, oh, wow, this is, I may be underselling this team just a, a tad this season. What did they say? The Padres have the best record in baseball since August 31st that, of last that year, was which the, is funny. That was the note that yeah, they, they had since August 31st of last year. Crazy, Padres right? have the best record in baseball and the second best run differential in all of baseball. Yeah, yeah very exciting day for you. The second best run differential. They're scoring plenty of runs. Which right I, now. of course, took to mean. Had had they invited the Padres to the playoffs last year, they would have won the World Series. Correct. They yeah. just they lost their invitation in the mail. That's exactly right. You did not have the best team in baseball, even part of your postseason. What are you thinking? Yeah. MLB. Yeah, no, yeah. What yeah. an oversight on your part. Correct. Yeah, and, and it, it's what makes last season so tough to stomach, uh, thinking about all the ones that got away. You know, the Kansas City series, the Cincinnati series, the ones that totally, Pirates. totally got Yeah, the Pirates just Brewers. murdered you, murdered you. And th- that's what makes it so hard to stomach. Like, you you guys couldn't win those games, right? And that's what, you know, that's what you look at this year, and especially right now with a three-game set against the Blue Jays and then four against the Rockies. I was glad to see that, you know, you were downplaying the Rockies a little bit yesterday. Tony Gwynn Jr. is with me. He, it's a house of horrors. It's a house of horrors there. That's the that's the series I'm most nervous about so far this year. Next week, Monday, Four games. Monday through Thursday, <laughs> down a starting pitcher. <sighs> no, I mean there's certainly an argument to be worried about that. Hate series. that place. Hate it. Hate watching games there. Had a uh, just a couple of games last night. Uh, Giants, as I said, beat the Diamondbacks five nothing. Logan Webb was uh, was really good. Seven innings, two hits, five strikeouts. Nasty. Uh, Jack Leiter made his major league debut for the Texas Rangers, the second overall pick in twenty twenty one. The he's the nephew of Al Leiter and the son of Mark Leiter, yeah. right? Looks just like him, except throwing from the opposite side of the mound. I thought uh, he was Al Leiter's son. Oh, he's he Al, Al Leiter's son. son. Yeah. Mark Leiter's Mark nephew Leiter is Mark Leiter Junior. I think. Mark Leiter Jr. is Mark Leiter's son. That makes a lot of sense. That makes yeah, a lot actually. more sense, yeah. It'd be um, weird if Al Leiter's son was Mark, Mark Leiter, Leiter, Leiter Jr. Jr. That would, that would be a <laughs> that wouldn't add up. odd naming <laughs> I convention. I could be wrong, though. Uh, anyway, he kind of struggled. He had one really bad inning. Three and two-thirds, eight hits, seven earned runs. But the Rangers did win the game 9-7. to seven. Like the Texas Rangers, who, of course, won the World Series last year, the Padres at some point are hoping to bring up a couple of these top pitching prospects. I don't think they want to rush them. Robbie Snelling is an, a name we certainly had our eye on in, in spring training. The guy who is off to the best start, though, uh, and pitched again last night, is Adam Mazur. And he has really thrown well. I think he's given up like one run in 16 innings or something like that so far in the minor leagues. And, and while he may not have the best stuff stuff, so our, our friend Kevin Charity from Mad Friars tweeting about him and said, I think the person I'm most wrong about is Adam Mazur. He has got the best command and best like intellect for pitching in the Padres minor leagues, and I think he said, I think he looks clo- very close to ready. If the Padres need a pitcher soon, that that he might be the one that gets the first opportunity from the young wave of pitchers coming up for the Padres. 
Yeah, excited to see it, you know, and, and what you hope, though, is you don't need them a ton this year, right? If you need those guys, if you're calling on those guys uh, a lot this year, that means that you're you're suffering a lot of injuries to your starting pitching rotation. And uh, Jeremiah Estrada, I think, had another good outing last night as well, uh, throwing hard, man, 98 miles an hour and getting K's, swing and miss and, and all that. So there there should be some some transactions here in the next few days. And again, as I belabor the point, when you go to Colorado, you need all the arms that you can have. You can you just can't have too many too much pitching when you go there because <laughs> you can just get away from you quick. That's true. You got to have it. That's true. I wouldn't be surprised if they they sometimes make a mid series move yeah. in Colorado just so they can make sure cycle in a couple of extra bullpen arms and just make sure you're never left short in a four game series at Coors Field. You know, and I I I do. There's something to be said too if you're going to bring up one of these guys. Is that the best place to do it? But then again, they're well. The, the yeah, AAA I, guys I, may I, be used to it. I, I mean, I they have done it before. I, they I, have. I remember in the past, but uh, I don't. I don't. L- was it? Who was? Was it Lauer? Before? It might have been. And it was like, oh my god! I'm, it's like I, watching I don't know someone that I'd die. Bring up a Snelling or a Mazer. No, but you can cycle in some of your other bullpen yeah. options in Colorado just to just to get through the series. So uh, first, though, of course, it's the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, three games tonight's matchup. Is Yariel Rodriguez, uh, who's been he's been good on the mound for the Blue Jays this season. Matt Waldron has been very good his last couple of outings for the Padres as well. After that first shaky inning, essentially, he's been he's been good. He's been good as that fifth starter for the Padres. He'll get an opportunity tonight. Was Yariel the one that pitched for Cuba? I think so. The, yeah, yeah, I liked him, man. Ooh boy, five forty Eco Water Fun SoCal one. pregame show with Sammy Levitt tonight. So. Uh, we'll come back. Take on Woods is ahead. It was also it was a quiet night in sports, except for Stephen Woods, who actually had a better this is amazing. Who was more into the sports watching than anyone else in the country. We'll explain why coming up next here on the fan.
While most of us, really, really around the country last night, were kind of in a sports limbo. As it was, uh, there was very few baseball games. There was no basketball games. I don't even think there was a UFL game on last night. There, it's like <laughs> gymnastics was the only thing I could find. College gymnastics. We were all kind of in the sports torture chamber. However, <laughs> my co-host here was into it. Really into it. Tell everybody, Woodsy, what what sporting event you were watching last night. <laughs> I had a um it was a long day. You know, I woke up early as balls, one fifty five. Mm-hmm. We did the you know, did the normal rigmarole of the show, did the round table, came yeah. home, oh. went to get the kids and, and and all that, and then went to pick my car up. At about five o'clock, I finished dinner and I looked at Hannah and I go, I need a I need a moment. And I was, I was depleted. The tank was empty. I just needed, I was just cashed. So I went back to my room, shut the door, which I never do. And I just laid down and I put on the TV and I, I go. I don't need to hear this. What? No. Oh, no. It didn't go there. I was too tired. I, I couldn't if I wanted to. I was exhausted. So I put on the TV and I go, I'm flipping through and I go, oh, all right. NHL playoffs are on. Hell yeah. The Kraken. Against the Minnesota Wild, one-one game. I'm like, all right, bro. Ever, you know, I like I, I playoff hockey's killer. I'm gonna watch. I'm watching, and I'm looking, and I'm like, there, I don't see any graphics. They're not doing a great job promoting how exciting these NHL playoffs are. Probably because dropping the ball. Yeah, probably because it wasn't the playoffs. Okay, <laughs> probably because it was the. <laughs> Regular season finale? Not only was it not the playoffs, you were watching two teams that had already been eliminated oh from playoff my God. contention. <laughs> playing out the string at the end of the year. I didn't know that. Just, <laughs> just, just there, now. Just there so they don't get fined. <laughs> it's just, they had sold tickets. They have to show up and play the game. Probably, <laughs> probably some of their young prospects called up just to give them a little ice time at the end of the season. <laughs> And I'm watching it. I'm into it. I'm into it. And I'm like, yes, boy, these teams are going to battle it out for what? Five games, seven games, whatever it is in the, the opening round of the NHL playoffs. I don't even know. I have a uh, I have a small confession to make as well. First, we need a contestant for uh, Take on Woods. It's, uh, it's a couple minutes away, but if you want to join us, 833-288-0973. 833-288-0973, our musical trivia game. Qualify for Las Vegas coming up. I was all set to watch the the Western Conference play-in tournament final game. Yeah. The Sacramento Kings and the New Orleans Pelicans last night. And I kept turning on. I thought, I thought it was on TNT, and I go to 34, and it's like, I, I did the those, exact same thing. One I of those, re, it's like I, one of those reruns, and I go, Man, maybe if it's on TBS, they, why would yeah. they put it on a TBS? No, it must be on ESPN. And I went to ESPN, and it was like college gymnastics, and I'm going, what, what am I missing here? Why is the game not on? Why can I not? Is it on NBA TV? It's like that doesn't even come in in my, my work TV channel. Why can I not find this playoff game? It's Tuesday, Wednesday, then Thursday is back to the Western Conference, and Friday is the Eastern Conference game. And I could not figure out where the NBA play-in tournament was. You know, I was, I was kind of thinking, oh, Kings, Pelicans, this is going to be a good game. The winner gets the thunder in the first round. Finally, I, I just... Go to the computer and go, i got to look this up. Where am I missing this? Games today, not Tonight. yesterday. They're, both, they're playing both of them today, Western and Eastern Conference, eighth seed elimination games tonight. So there was no basketball, and I did not realize that. I just assumed that they were just going every other day. Like, I don't, I'm just an idiot. You yeah. Know? When you assume. Me you know. settling in for some playoff <laughs> hockey on a Thursday night. Abandoning my family at crunch time, I call it five o'clock. I'm just abandoning them fully. Like Hannah, you got it. I I need a, I need a, I need a blow for a minute. And so I watched some of the game, and I texted Ben. And I go, "Am I watching the playoffs?" Yeah, he goes, up. "Are these the NHL playoffs I'm watching, <laughs> or is this still the regular season?" <laughs> Because there was no fanfare, none whatsoever. You'd think that they'd be like, oh, man, playoff hockey's here. You'd think there'd be a graphic. you think they'd be promoting the series, other. Series, like series tied, 0-0 zero, zero at this point, something I, like that. I, well, it was on ESPN, so I'm assuming it's a big game. No. I know they have, they do a lot of NHL. They have the, the thing, I think. So 
No, no, just settling in on a, abandoning my family again for a meaningless meaningless game with two teams that aren't going to the playoffs. No. I wasn't even getting like a good pre. Well, at least no. I can see what the Kraken are doing. <laughs> see how they're moving the puck. No, no. nothing. It's completely a, a waste of time. Ben goes, no, man, that's a regular season. Finale. You're close though. It's Saturday tomorrow. The NHL playoffs get underway. The NBA so, playoffs get underway tomorrow as well. I just I felt like a big dummy, and I, it's, which is fine. It, you How know, long did you keep watching? I watched. A, after I watched like out. a whole period. Dude. I did. I watched a whole period. Well, I watched a whole period until I asked. And then when you asked and realized you were watching regular season finale, so not at, playoffs. At, that's when I got up. Got the kids out of the bath and st- like started doing some fatherly duties. Put them to bed, and then I came back in. And Hannah was watching Shark Tank, and I said, "Okay, I'm just going to read." So Any I read good products. They were pitching on no, Shark Tank. I, I read a I read a book instead to try to you know get tired, and it was great. I slept much much better, but uh, I, you know I needed to get rest. I've got a uh, now. This is interesting. I have a seals game tonight. Speaking of, and I think it's meaningless for us. Now, the Vancouver Warriors. You've clinched a, uh, a home yeah. playoff game no matter what next weekend. But the interesting thing is Vancouver, who's coming in, right? There's a couple interesting parts to this story, even if you don't even know what we're talking about. The Seals are our NLL National, League, National Lacrosse League box lacrosse team. I do PA for them, if you didn't know. They're red hot, the Warriors, and I think they're still fighting for a playoff spot. That being said, their head coach, if you guys remember, last year, he was the head coach for the Calgary Roughnecks. And he is the guy that wrote on a whiteboard, cheater, and held it up and stared at me like Charles Manson. Remember this. Remember this? He wrote cheater and was like, had this death, like these big eyes. He's a scary dude. He's Kurt Miloski. He's now the head coach of the Vancouver Warriors. They're coming in red hot. I think they need to so win. So what did he think you were doing? So remember this. Um, it was one of those games. Now, Pachanga Arena, San Diego, is an older arena. There's a, a, to my right in the penalty box, there's a guy on my left, my boy LL, and he does all the clock, clock management. He does the shot clock. He does the game clock. He do, handles the horns, everything. I'm in the middle with just a handheld microphone. That's all I have. Then to my right is our... Uh, production director right he's got the replay thing in front of him there's another ref in there that turns the 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 light on and the shot clock he does the shot clock reset actually so i'm harmless in this i'm just hey let's go seals come on defense defense that's my job (laughs) they thought i was manipulating the replay and or the shot clock and or the game clock and i have no control. Zero. But because you stand in the middle of all of it, it looks like you're orchestrating. You're Correct. the pu- puppet master. The, yeah, the puppet master. And they thought there was some sort of Houston Astros level conspiracy going on with they the did. Seals. Not only did their coach hold up a sign on a whiteboard that said cheater and looked at me again like he wanted to murder me. The Calgary Roughneck players were walking over to the glass pointing at me going, you're horse ass. You're horse. I almost soiled myself. <laughs> I w- <laughs> lacrosse players, by the way, are tough as nails. As nails. I was terrified of them. And they're pointing in the booth, you horses. And I'm like, I just do PA. I'm like hyping up the crowd. So he's coming back tonight. He did apologize to the media after the game. He said it le- he let it his emotions get the better of him. But he never apologized to me. Did, did anyone ever like? No. Like clear it up for him. Like you're not, I, you're I not have, involved in any way. I have cheater. No. Oh, there's in our YouTube stream. There's the picture. No way, you found it. Paulie found the picture. Uh, Josh tweeted it in. There Look it is. at. I was trying to find. I was like, that's I used, directed I, at you. I remember yes. there was a picture of this. Look at that serial killer. He does. I mean, I hate to judge a book by its cover, but that guy does look like a criminal. He it, like yeah. like. I'll be honest. He looks like a murderer. <laughs> And he was holding that up, and and the, again, those players. It looks were, like he's played by Al Pacino. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Cheetah. It was terrifying. Hoo-ah, so cheetah. he's so he's coming in <laughs> back tonight. Okay. I'm. This like I said, this game doesn't mean much for us, 
But I'm like, I kind of want to beat the ever. I'm going to ch- get hype tonight. You hype him up. That's your job. That's my job. Hype everybody up. Win win one for Woods tonight. Yeah, he uh, Adam Adam in the chat says he's got an odd smile while making the accusation. Yeah, that's what serial killers do. As they murder you, they're smiling. So that's he's he's here. He's in town. Hannah goes. Do you think he'll apologize before the game? I go. I don't think so. I don't think he'll do you walk make the to, first move. You do I make the him. first move? What's up? How, how like, what's up, Chief? Hey, bro, just so you know, do I give him that? Hey, man, can we clear the air here? <laughs> nah, I just want you to know my responsibilities. Please don't send no, your I think pl- you, you talk, like, down on him. Oh, do you? How you doing, little guy? He would kick my ass. You see him? Nah, you got this. You well, got this. so if you needed an excuse to come to the Seals game tonight, sealslax.com, it's going to be, should be interesting. James in the chat says he really wants to take on Woods. Let's do it. Uh, we got Joe in the uh, in the in the waiting room here to take on Woods, which is brought to you by Valvoline Instant Oil Change. It only takes 15 minutes. You don't have to get out of your car. For directions and discounts, go to SoCalOilChange.com. That's SoCalOilChange.com. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. All right, let's see if we can get you qualified for Las Vegas. Two nights at the Westgate. You can check out their $70 million in room renovations and going to throw in some tickets to Cool and the gang for their residency at the stage of the Westgate. Get them now at Ticketmaster.com. All right, here are your categories. We still have royal titles, British royal titles appearing in all answers. Fire and Ice, those are musical artist bands with either fire or ice in their name. And our new category, No Lefts, All Right. Five song titles that include the word or phrase, All Right. So of those three, Joe, royal titles, Fire and Ice or No Lefts, All Right, what would you like to play? Let's go with fire and ice. Fire and ice. Okay, Joe, we've got five questions. They are all different musical artists or bands, and they will have either fire or ice in their name. You'll have 60 seconds to get as many of the five as possible. Then Woods will go. Uh, if you beat her time, we'll put you into the drawing for Las Vegas. First question is the two-second song. Polly is queuing it up right now. You need to give me both the title of that song and... The artist with fire or ice in their name to score that point. Joe, are you ready to play? Yeah, let's do it. Paul, you good? All right, 60 seconds on the clock. Your time begins when Paul plays the music. The category fire and ice. Good luck, Joe. Let's take on Woods. Um, Born Robert Van Winkle, which rapper was accused of copyright infringement and had to give co-writing credit for his biggest hit to David Bowie and Queen? Which band is best known for an English-language 1982 cover version of Falco's Der Commissar? Which Canadian indie rock band won a 2011 Album of the Year Grammy for The Suburbs? Got it today. <laughs> Born in the Bronx in 2000, which female rapper gained early fame on TikTok for her song Munch and has collaborated with artists including Taylor Swift and Nicki Minaj? Oh, that's a big goose egg today. Oh, no. <clears throat> Dude, let me just ask you, Joe. Do you, do, you ha- do you know any bands with fire or ice in their name? Can you think of one? Maybe you picked the category oh, wrong. Firehouse. Today. Firehouse. No, that's not one of them. Uh, let's just leave it there. We'll bring Woods in and give everyone another chance to go through the answers. All right. Can I tell you how yeah. committed I am to the uh, sanctity of this game? Walk out into there, uh, out in the, the, the little hallway, and I hear your beautiful oh, dulcet Oh, so you had to go tones. find somewhere that was playing it and turn and, it down. And there's a cue speaker oh. out there, but that one was off. And no. I'm like, where's where is it, it coming from? So I ran down two studios in. Turn cue speaker down. was Someone on. Someone was listening. You had to turn it down. I turned it off. Good work. Just so you know. I don't I'm know if it's going to matter too much today. We'll see. All right, 60 seconds back <laughs> on the clock. <laughs> your time begins when Paul plays the music. Good luck, Woods. Hope you're ready. Let's take on Joe. Steely Dan. 
Incorrect. All right. Born Robert Van Winkle, which rapper was accused of copyright infringement and had to get Vanilla co- Ice. Correct. Which band is best known for an English language 1982 cover version of Falco's Der Commissar? Don't turn around. Uh oh. <laughs> what is the. Pass. Which Canadian indie rock band won a 2011 Album of the Year Grammy for the Suburbs? Oh, Arcade Fire. Correct. Born in the Bronx in 2000, which female rapper gained early fame on TikTok for her song Munch and has collaborated with artists including Taylor Swift and Nicki Minaj? Did you say Munch? Munch. Pass. Which band is best known for an English language 1982 cover version of Falco's Der Commissar? All I can think of is Falco. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know the category. I'm out. All I'm right. Out. Two. Two. Which is a win. It was a tough category. Maybe Joe doesn't feel as bad for his goose egg today. That was tough. What's uh, the, the category? The category was Fire and Ice. Bands with Fire or Ice. So the first in their one was name. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah, September, September by Earth, Wind, Idiot. and Fire. Well, Steely Dan. What? You got Vanilla Ice. After the Fire After is the fire. their commissar. You got Arcade Fire and uh, Ice Spice. Ice Spice. Got is it. Is your TikTok munch collaborator with Taylor Swift and Nicki Minaj. That was tough. All right, tough one today. Uh, don't uh, do this is coming up next. Pauly, uh, we have some. <laughs> well, pre-NFL draft press conference as uh, as pointless of a press conference as you're ever going to get from one of the NFL head coaches because they never tell you anything about what they're going to do in the draft. So why on earth would it make a don't do this? You'll have to wait and find out. <laughs> One of my favorite Coming up things next. that we do. <laughs> With Ben and Woods after traffic on 97.3 The Fan.
Tune in every Thursday at 10 a.m. for our 97.3 The Fan commercial for a Padres Roundtable featuring uh, Woods and myself, Annie and Elston, Gwen and Chris, presented by San Diego Roundtable Pizza. For takeout or delivery, go to roundtablepizza.com. Roundtable, the last honest pizza. Had a really, really good roundtable yesterday. Yeah. Enjoyed that. Annie's going to step in to my hosting role next week when I'm on vacation. Right now, though, it's time for Don't Do This and. uh Woodsy has been anticipating this audio all morning. You know, usually when there's a uh, fart gate situation, somebody will be talking, and then you, they're talking, they're talking, and then pfft, in the background you hear it. Wait, what was that? You're like, did he just? Well, Jaguar, Jaguar's GM is Balky, Trent Balky, Trent Balky. Balky. Yeah. He, uh, he didn't want there to be any misconceptions about what he actually did at a press conference. And I, again, I got to imagine if you're a, uh, a GM of an NFL team, you probably want to control yourself a little bit, a let's, little bit more. Let's all listen in. Let's listen in. You tell me. Still got a couple of days uh, going through coach and I haven't sat down and go, excuse me, gone through the final <laughs> board Just, yet. What? Excuse me. Hmm. Let's listen one more time and determine whether or not that really was. Still got a couple of days uh, going through, Coach, and I haven't sat down and go, excuse me, gone through the final board yet. He, f- he ripped one right in the middle of his. You can't hold it, Trent, for huh. five more minutes. Could it have been? It sounded a little bit like guttural? my my throat noise. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't a throat. Could have been guttural. Do you, do you have my throat noise for comparison? find it you know what I'm saying? because it seemed like it was somewhat similar i didn't see like he didn't like lift I, yeah or anything Wait, hold on. i mean that would really be bold in front of a room full of people on television with a microphone in front of you could have been guttural but he did say he's, he's, he did say excuse, excuse me. me he did uh yeah uh, there was a bit of a like a pause for a sniff as well which was odd I don't know if you noticed that. He maybe did the sniff cover up, like, oh, this one's coming out the to try to cover it. But then it up. he apologized, like excuse me. Well he, he realized it. it came out louder. Right, here's Ben. You thought that was good news yesterday. Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> now Trent Balky. Trent Balky. Going through coach and I haven't sat down and go excuse me, gone through the final board yet. <laughs> I think it's a fart. I think it's a fart. Boom. <laughs> that's a fart. See, that's fart. a different sound, though. That's a fart. He farted. Hmm. Fart gate. Well, now nobody knows. When, yeah, nobody in the chat says that bad noise just kills him every time. Me too. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a guttural. Trent Balky was a, he too, <laughs> he too did. <laughs> like kids say. And he says, excuse me. Excuse me. Like, that's, yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. Go- yeah, he tuned it. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm done. Now my, my story kind of pales it in does. comparison Sorry to about that. that. Sorry. Very odd, interesting one, though. Um, <laughs> so uh, a criminal charges have been filed against 39-year-old Robert Globensky from Augusta, Georgia who is uh, alleged to have moved, quote, millions of dollars worth of Masters Golf Tournament merchandise and historical memorabilia from the club from 2009 to 2022. He's charged with taking it over state lines to Tampa, Florida. What is not clear yet in this story is exactly where... He is getting all of his stolen goods. What kind if of he's goods just like, are we talking? Is he going? Is he just shoplifting every year at the Masters from the merchandise tent? I mean, they also say historical memorabilia. Is he going into the clubhouse, taking things off the walls? Yeah, here's Rory's or uh, here's <laughs> Phil Mickelson's old wedge that we have on. So he's stealing like green jackets here, but I mean, millions of dollars of merchandise over a 14-year period. Guy is like it's an inside job. Every, yeah, that it, he's from Augusta, so maybe like some sort of inside job, and he's like the black market of, you know, it we fell off a golf, truck. We like, talking golf shirts? Is this like we talking they make deliveries to the club for merchandise, and it somehow it never makes it in, and he just has been waylaying it or something. There's, uh, they're they're kind of light on the overall details. It's just that it's been going on for 13 years. It's a total of millions of dollars of memorabilia. He's been driving it from Georgia to Florida when he gets it. Where that's the best place to fence 
Masters. Is that, is that, was that well, well known? Yeah. It's Florida. Um, if found guilty, it just says here, this is kind of funny. Globensky would have to return all the stolen goods or money made from them. <laughs> really? <laughs> found guilty, he just doesn't get to keep it all. You got, you got me. You, should I give it back? No, it's fine. This is, you know, you well, got I, I, I fenced it in Florida, <laughs> as you guys know. Uh, all right, let's get to some do do this. DD Mega Doo Doo. So the San Diego Rotary Club uh, honored Peter Seidler with the Mr. San Diego Award yesterday. Uh, it is the most prestigious award, Ben, according to Allison Edmonds, that can be granted to a San Diegan. Pretty cool. He was notified of this honor before he passed, mm-hmm. and his wife, Sheil, was there to accept. And again, strap in. I mean, it just, it just is so sweet. This is a wonderful picture of Peter right here, so thank you for that. Um, Peter, he was a businessman, and um, but he never thought of himself that way. Sometimes I'd be filling out forms for, you know, various things for the children's activities, and they'd ask for his occupation, and he'd be peering over my shoulder, and he'd be like, put artist. <laughs> Because that's how he saw himself. And um, he never needed the spotlight, as some of the speakers have mentioned. But he also wasn't afraid to use his platform for those without a voice or those who could truly benefit, like Dan mentioned. His passing was um, sudden and tragic. I don't think that's always been conveyed in the press. But... um, It was a shock to me and the children and the family. And the past few months, the shock, acceptance, you know, all the feelings. And with that, all the memories come up. Like Schulte was saying, I I also talk to Peter all the time. I don't know what anyone thinks about that, but it works for me. And I asked him, you know, what should I tell everyone, honey? And um, I think... One observation I have of of how he did business is um, that you can always afford to be kind, no matter what conversation you're having or who it's with. Such a uh, good reminder, as usual. You can always afford to be kind. I'm not uh, guilty of that uh, at every chance, but... I do feel guilty now after hearing that that message uh, from from Sheil Seidler, and that was is, amazing. It was incredible. I mean, we've, it was a great uh, reminder. Obviously, we've seen Sheil and the kids at, at some of the events, the mm-hmm. memorial, and everything. But but she didn't speak, and I totally understand why. It's very emotional. Yeah. But uh, I loved what she had to say about Peter Artist. Just put artist. Just put artist. And I loved the the statement. It, it's you can always afford to be kind. I did not know, and she said the one thing that had, hadn't been portrayed in the media, and I, I'll say I think we're all as mm-hmm. guilty as this as anyone else. I, I think because we had heard you know, Peter was ill for some months and had stepped away a little bit from the team and the day-to-day. Of course, his history. That we kind of assumed that, well, obviously he must, they must have known things weren't going bad and he was, he was kind of getting sick over a period of time, and then it wasn't as unexpected. And to find out that no, it really was quite Oof. unexpected Makes that it they tougher. were fully, you know, I, I assume like fully expecting him to get better, and then it just didn't happen. That that is somehow makes it even more sad a little bit to me. Not that it wasn't incredibly sad to begin with, but I did not realize that, and I apologize for ever insinuating that I did think, yeah. just kind of assume that because he had backed away and had been ill, that that it wasn't as unexpected as it was. So I did not know that. Yeah, so. great, great message. You know, it's just a great message. You can always afford to be kind. I will try my very hardest. It's okay if you fail sometimes. Yeah, but of as long as you're trying. Yeah, just but, try. It's all, yeah. That's all you need to do. That's an important don't and do do this for a Friday. That was Don't Do This with Ben and Woods on 97.3 The Fan. All right, let's take a time out. Uh, if you want to join us, our phone lines are open, 833-288-0973. We want to talk about the Padres as they come back home this weekend. The fan graphs piece we were discussing earlier, The uh, maybe a... a a newfound optimism through three weeks of the season about the San Diego Padres. Please join us this morning, 833-288-0973. you got more Bennett Woods on the way in just a moment on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Had some pretty significant news yesterday, if you're, if you're a, a longtime San Diego sports watcher. And uh, wanted to give my best wishes to Uncle Teddy, Ted Leitner, who is... Uh, great Uncle Teddy. The great Uncle Teddy, who is uh, down to one last season. San Diego State announced that uh, he's stepping away from the uh, the football broadcast. He will do one more season of San Diego State basketball, and then he will call it a career. Uh, decades-long San Diego sports casting legend, Ted Leitner. And... Um, I brought back some of, we've done some pieces over the years with Ted on television. Of course, we've had him on our show many times. I pulled my diphthong in college. <laughs> over the years, called not just Padres, but Chargers, Clippers, Aztecs. Many talent. For its 25 years at Channel 8, had his own morning radio show at the same time as well. Amazing. An absolute legend in the business. We pulled some clips the last time we interviewed him. I think it was when he had his book came out, remember? Yeah. And I love this one. He said, every year they would do the the poll in the San Diego Magazine and the UT, and I would always win best sportscaster, and I would always win worst sportscaster as well. It's incredible. Every single year, I won both best and worst sportscaster in San Diego. You loved him, you hated him, but you listened all the time. So. I got a broadcast here, and you're worried about a suitcase. <laughs> Unbelievable. I love him. I absolutely love him. These people are unbelievable in this arena. They got security guards, think they're guarding Pen the Pentagon. <laughs> Come over here, interrupting me during a broadcast to worry about a suitcase. Unbelievable. Absolutely incredible, incredible <laughs> audio, an incredible human. I've gotten the chance, we've all gotten the chance to talk to him so many times. Um, yeah, I, I, I hate to see, uh, I hate when a, a guy, like Vern Lundquist, right? Like, I hate that he's not doing the Masters anymore. I'm going to not like that Uncle Teddy's not working uh, in, in sports casting anymore. I love that dude. And he was, for me, when I moved here, such an acquired taste. Because I had never heard anything like him. Ever. And I'll never... Here's a concept. Bite me. I remember the first time, it was 2010, and I was driving back from, I think, the first Padres game I ever went to, and I was listening to the game. I was like, who is this clown? <laughs> like, he's a clown. And I listened to the next one, and I listened to the next one. I, then I started to, you know, learn about who he was, and I went, "Oh, I love this dude. This guy's fantastic." And uh, all the stories and the legends, and you know, my father-in-law worked with Uncle Teddy as well. Great picture of them from back in the day. Uncle Teddy with a full head of dark hair. I mean, just incredible, an incredible career. And this I, ball I, game belongs to my San Diego Padres. A total, total class act. I was, uh, All the way. I was talking to Kimberly Hunt about Ted last night. She never worked with him directly, but she should known him for a long time as well. East County Chris says Uncle Teddy's segment on Channel 8 News was much was t much w must watch TVs go. in the eight <laughs> must watch oh, TV man. in the 80s and 90s. There we go. <laughs> and what was always amazing about Uncle Teddy, he never used a prompter. That's he never flubbed three times. He never no. would never have done that. No, he wouldn't either. But he never used a prompter. He'd walk in, and he had a, he had good producers, and they'd set up like the video and everything. And yeah. They'd, here's here's what you got. You know, and and he'd go for like five minutes. They gave him more time than I've ever had on a sports segment uh, on Channel Ten, and he'd just sit down, and he'd just go just off the cuff. You know, and he would be funny and witty and insightful and angry, and he could just muster it all in a five-minute sports cast every single night. Controversial. Could you imagine winging it like that? I mean, we do for four hours essentially every morning, but with the pictures and everything, it's not easy to do. No, I mean, it's wing, not easy winging to do. it on television, navigating a television broadcast is way different yeah. than this. I mean, this if you if we screw up, we screw up. Yeah. I mean, who cares? <laughs> Ob we, clearly, we, obviously. <laughs> I mean, look what we're talking about here. <laughs> I uh, I have a tremendous, tremendous amount of respect for Teddy Leitner and the way he uh, handles everything. And um, just been such a pleasure and honor to get to know him. And I wish him nothing but the best in health and uh, whatever he decides to do. He is he's a fascinating character. His what was his bit with hockey? He hated hockey. He so would only he, show fights. fights when he did highlights. He would never show actual highlights. Only the fights. <laughs> and I last night I I did a little story on Ted, and I went right into a hockey story because I said because everyone knows hockey was always Teddy's favorite <laughs> sport. I love it, man. 
He's so. like me. He like I'm, he wasn't afraid to say he didn't like. I don't really watch the NBA. True. Right? I'm just yeah. like. If, Uncle, if it works for Uncle Teddy... He, oh, it drove people crazy, too. He oh, wanted dude, real hockey there's, highlights, there's and he, two, wouldn't, he wouldn't give them to him. There's two <laughs> stories about him. One, he told me that his kids started stopped telling... They, they'd go, are you... And he, they'd go, no. Mm-mm, that's not my dad. Which is gnarly, right? Because he goes, he goes the other... like the, the kids of dads that hated me hated my kids, and that was unfair. And I think about that with my kids. And then the other one was... He told us this on the air. Somebody had gotten traded here from the Dodgers, and the guy, whoever got traded here, like sought out Uncle Teddy and walked up to him and was like, hey, bro, they hate you. (laughs) The Dodgers. The the former we, they hate you. All the players hate you. The fans want you dead, and I'm I'm nodding along going, (laughs) This is the way. You know, so that's this ve- is the way. That's very interesting because obviously you can make a lot of comparisons between me and Uncle Teddy. I've yes. Been Channel 10 for 20 years, morning radio show host, you know, similar careers. But in many ways, you're the Uncle <laughs> Teddy of the group. Uh, he was always unafraid to talk about his personal life and yeah. kind of failings as well. I mean, famous for ex-wives and he would joke about constantly about you know just the the many ex now, I'm mrs not, lightners i'm not famous for ex-wives but you're you do <laughs> you're more than willing to talk about yeah. your life and the things yeah. that are less than perfect sometimes in your life and, and ted would always do that as well i'm he, san diego's new ted lightner <laughs> that? what was that from I don't know. <laughs> That's the thing. We never know the context of any of these things. I actually don't know. I doubt I was just bragging about it. That oh, was from it, 2021. I'm San Diego's new Ted Leitner. There's <laughs> definitely some, some irony somewhere in my tone, but I don't remember that comment either. All right, let's, uh, let's check. Tra- oh, by the way, Teddy did say, I will miss everything about it. But he also said... That it gets to the point where you still love the work, but the road gets very wearying, tired of the road, and Mountain West travel is awful. You know, Wyoming, Colorado oh, yeah, Springs, and Fort Collins, and those those trips that he won't have to take during uh, football season anymore. But I'm glad he's going to do one more hoop season. I'm really glad that in these last couple of years he got to go to a Final Four, yeah, something man. that you know probably never imagined he'd get to do, calling San Diego State basketball. So that is really cool. But he got that opportunity to to do that and call a national championship game a little over a year ago. Love that, dude. Wish you well, Uncle Teddy. All right, love if you. If you want to join us, 833-288-0973. And get some phone calls after a check of traffic here on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Davick. Traffic is sponsored by Viejas Casino and Resort. Just one accident to mention here, guys. This is uh, actually right outside of our studios, Northbound 15 before Arrow Drive. If one of you wouldn't mind going to the window and maybe see what lanes are blocked, because I can't see it here. But, yeah, watch out for a little slowing there, guys. Northbound 15 right before Arrow Drive. Fortunately, no other problem spots on our roads this time. The daily jackpots at Viejas Casino and Resort are on fire. Players have hit huge wins with bets as low as 50 cents. Check out their jackpot winning smiles on the Viejas Facebook page. Want to join them? Who knows? Our next jackpot winner could be you. The A-House Casino and Resort. Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. It's always, uh, it's always a bit of a roulette wheel when we go out to the phone since we don't have a screener. So let's just go to line one. Is this uh, Alex? Good morning. You're yeah, on hey, Woods. Guys. Hey, how are hey, you doing? Can you hear me? Great. I can, I can, I can hear you. Loud and clear. Good. Hey, I'm really excited to get out to Petco for another little mini homestand uh, coming up this weekend. And I wanted to bring up something that has been bugging me. I called in a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah, it was something else Petco-wise that was bugging me. Sure. This time I'm wondering if you guys want to uh, use the platform that you guys have to affect some positive change in the world here. And this has something to do with uh, our beloved DJ EJ and the vibes that we're feeling at Petco. Hmm. And I, I'm wondering... Why are we still listening to Spoonman riff for the every strikeout that we hear? Right, Woods. I, I know you're from the '90s. I'm yeah, from the yeah. '90s too. I you know, I love, I love Soundgarden. I love Bad Motorfinger and yes. you know Chris Cornell. Shout out to his family and 100%, everything. Hundred percent. But it's just, it's just a strange thing that I've been wondering. And my sister actually, uh, maybe a year ago, took to Twitter and tried to talk to like Bobby and dj ej about like what is this and like dj ej didn't really have a great explanation about why it was even 
you know, implemented in the first place. It's a and so now that like, you know, it's years later and the vibes have become so much different than they were like ten years ago. Yeah. It seems like we could we could pick something a little more vibe friendly what than is the, you know, the like dreading riff. What's the riff they play? I can hear it. It's just, is it just the dun 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 Yeah, it's been playing for yeah, years. I, I want to say it goes back yeah. to like the Qualcomm Stadium days when a pitcher would get a strikeout. And I don't know the, the real answer for you, Alex, other <laughs> than so good, dude. I can promise you this. If you took it away, you'd get more complaints than you can imagine. Because people get used oh, to things that That's maybe people true. get used to things and you try to take that away and even though you could you could replace it with something that's ten times better, you'd have a large segment of people who are going, What happened? I love when you would play Spoon Man after a strikeout. I mean, same thing on a walk. I mean, does Ric Flair always we have to the, do the woo after every single walk that they do? Every single time a Padres player walks, and I can't – how many seasons do you think it's been that every walk yeah. has been accompanied by the Ric Flair, woo, and everyone does the woo? If you stop doing it, though, people would lose their minds. There it is. Strike out. My only fear is that it would be replaced by something I hated even more, <laughs> right? Like something I'd be like, oh, no, you know? Like Sound Soundgarden never – Never fails me, but I can see his. It doesn't make any sense. Like it logically, Spoon Man after a K doesn't make. No one's ever said, "Oh, that guy just served you a spoon. You're out." Like it's, <laughs> if it was a thing, man, man. <laughs> that I never really understood why they did it, but I like Soundgarden a lot. Uh, I like the Woo. I do like the Woo. I like that. You don't like that? I, do. I I didn't say I didn't like it, but it's been going on a long time. And if the, you know, if Alex says you need to freshen things up Bro, from time I, to time, I replace the bumper music here a few times you a year. You get tired of things. I get tired of things quickly. Um, I don't I don't go to enough games for it to affect me really. But I I I that's an interesting like thing to bring up, and I don't know the rules behind it and or the impetus for doing it. There's probably something you have to – don't you have to get licensing for to use that stuff? I, I don't know how it works at ballparks. I, I assume that they have to get something. That's so funny. But, like, what, what if you took away Sweet Caroline from Boston Red Sox fans? At some point, it becomes a tradition <laughs> oh, that's, just, be... that's Are... just ex- expected we when got, you go to the game. We got really bored at uh, during the pandemic, and we were trying to get them to change up some of the – you know, some of the music, like, like, like the Brohem – thing yeah. was like i think they're dodger fans you know maybe we don't use that um there was you know we we had some fun with it but i don't think too much about that but that is an interesting call and i i really would be curious as to why they did that in the first place the origination yeah. of the spoon man like you, you didn't you just threw him a spoon no i've never heard that before maybe i'm <laughs> missing something it's not a thing <laughs> i've been around a lot of ball players I've, Oh man, you guys just served him up. I mean, it might be just like Trevor's Hell's Bells. Could be as random as anything. Just yeah. got played one day and people responded well to it. So, well, let's do it again tomorrow. And then tomorrow became 20 years of tomorrows where they just kept doing it, you know, through inertia. Never changes. Yeah, it just, you get kind of locked in. That's an interesting point, though, um, that he makes. It's fun, that was a fun call. I like that. Let's get one more in here. Greg's called in. Greg, good morning. Welcome to Ben and Woods. Good morning. Hey, the. the... Spoon Man has nothing to do. It's just an iconic riff. Yeah, it's just like, a good uh, riff. Yeah. 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 Um, I want to talk about Joe Musgrove. Okay. Did anybody else notice how down his fastball velocity? Yes, sir. Yes, we have. The last year and how low his arm slot is? Yes, sir. We talked uh, to Eno Saris about it yesterday. We talked about it. When was his last start? Uh, the way he gutted out that Joe's one, last start was Monday on Tuesday. Monday, Monday on yeah. the road trip. And, and, you know, yeah, I think he's probably concerned about it as well, you know, and it, it could be lingering from the, the capsule um, injury. Say that. Capsule. His capsule <laughs> injury. That's not a capsule. 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 Uh, it could be lingering from that. I Again, you can't. You're. It's not sustainable to continue to give up early runs and then hope your offense bails you out. He did give you six. He got the win, and figured something out. His sweeper and his slider. I mean, the tilt on him, the the spin on him looks good. It just they weren't landing. So I I think he's still just working through some stuff. I'm 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 going to continue to kind of believe in in Joe Musgrove because um, the way he finished last season 
and coming in, I guess, semi-healthy, you know, we'll figure it out. But he, he needs to get it going, too. Yeah, it, it, you think with Joe, if there is a guy who can figure out how to make it work without his best stuff, you know, the the kind of the dog that he is, yeah. he will he will come up with something. It may not be instantly, but he will figure out a way to make it work, and hopefully he'll get that mile an hour back. It's not, it's not like Joe is really old. Yet, no. Right? How old is Joe? 31, 32? Yeah, I mean, he should still have a couple of more prime 31, yeah. Yeah. Should still, you know, injury if he's healthy. If he's healthy. Shouldn't see that dip quite yet. Now, you Darvish is definitely on that age where you watch for it a little bit now, uh, but he's got so much spin and movement that, that – it- and he still gets it up to like ninety seven. He humps it when he. But wants you got to watch for more injuries as you get later in his career. Like things his like neck. stiff necks and <laughs> things that us elderly people have to deal with all the time. He was finding out, yes, that does not. Uh, it kind of sucks getting older. I'm going to start taking fifteen days every time my neck is stiff. <laughs> you guys would never see me. Well, you can just take a take a Tylenol. Do you take a tablet or you take a capsule? A capsule. Yeah. <laughs> take a t- I take a capsule. <laughs> capsule. All right, uh, we'll come back. Uh, it is a uh, Cespedes Family Barbecue Friday. We got Jake from Cespedes Family Barbecue checking in. We'll talk some baseball with him. Hour number three of Bennett Woods next on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Halfway home on a Friday, Ben and Woods uh, edition. Great to be here with all of you guys. Looking very, uh, looking very active and alive in the the YouTube chat. You can watch us there. Certainly, thank you for listening on your radio, the Odyssey app. However, you consume us, we really, really appreciate that. Uh, I'm Woodsy. It's Paul Rindle, the executive producer, and Ben Higgins, the brilliant, brilliant sports mind that he is, and your friendly neighborhood sports anchor. I've thrown on my grand old barbecue hat because it is time. Uh, to talk a little baseball with Jake Mintz from Cespedes Family Barbecue on a Friday morning. His uh, his screen name is Irrelevant Profar. Oh, that's spicy. Ooh, I love that's how spicy, spicy that got. Jake is very relevant to us in the San Diego Padres, of course, now. Yeah, how funny was that? Though? It was I amazing. Mean, think, to me, that is the best burn, is that you are irrelevant. Yes. That it, is the best. It hurts. Like- and for it to come from Will Smith, who has the spice level of <laughs> milk of stick of butter milk yeah it, i was impressed like i think you actually have to tip your cap to will smith oh we did um, until of course the next day not... got it shoved right in his face yeah yeah but i understand that profar is very relevant to you and your listeners and i i'm not trying to throw shade i apologize good morning everybody morning buddy i i thought again Chippy baseball is truly amazing. It's the best kind of baseball. And I'm not talking head hunting, throwing 99 at somebody's back or neck. But chippy baseball, just a little bit of jawing, firing the team up. Uh, I thought it was cool. I mean, the next day they asked Pro Farbody. He's like, yeah, I screwed that up. Sorry, I kind of misinterpreted it. And then gets that big knock. And the baseball gods, as I said, Jake, they rarely smite the Dodgers, for what they say. <laughs> and it was fun to see them get smited uh, for once. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, there's nothing like a little comeuppance to soothe, yes. the, soothe the soul. Yes, it does. We love comeuppance. We got ours last year with our very high payroll and, and all that. And, you know, we kicked it around the last couple of days because the Padres were off last night. And, you know, I mean... I've see I see a lot of LA Dodgers fans flipping out right now and I I don't think they have much cause for concern being that they have, you know, six guys coming off the IL that could be pretty good rotations for a lot of teams. So, yes, but the outfield sucks. It does. It does. It's a bad outfield. It's a bad outfield. And it's it's being covered up. Covered up is not fair. It, it's being papered <laughs> over by the fact that they have uh, like MVP candidates at first base, shortstop, designated hitter. Will Smith is an incredible catcher. Yeah, uh, Max Muncy's still good at third base. Like they, the infield's amazing, but boy, that outfield. Pu James Outman has looked horrible. Chris Taylor looks like he's in a Space Jam baseball remake, and Kike Hernandez's return home has not been so glorious. And if there's a reason to doubt the Dodgers, it is that the outfield is kind of butt and the bottom of the order is similarly so. You know, uh, we discussed this on our roundtable yesterday with uh, Tony Gwynn Jr. said, yeah, they're still going to win the NL West. And and we, we all tended to agree, but there's different levels of winning. I mean, if they... If they win 94 games and win the NL West, that's a pretty disastrously bad season for what was expected for the Dodgers is this it, year. And is it's it not, disastrously, though? No. I, I, no, I, mean, no, I don't think it's disaster. No, wrong. You win the, yeah, you win the if West. If they win in the playoffs, it doesn't matter. Like This right. the Dodgers fan base has seen that team win 178 games in the regular season and then poop their pants in October. And so if they win 90 in the regular season and they win the World Series, like no one's going to be complaining entering the playoffs like if if everyone is healthy and ready to go for los angeles in the playoffs they're just as formidable as atlanta is um so am i worried a little am i panicking if i'm a dodgers fan no but i doubt anybody who's listening to this is um, no no hey, no there, we, guys, we definitely have dodgers fans listening no doubt oh, about yeah, it they do can I bring up a topic? Did you sure, guys sure. see this Colorado Rockies yes. uh, FAA story? Yeah, we I were just, just filled talking about them that in on the air. 20 minutes ago. I yeah. just filled them in on the, the story that I saw. And uh, if you guys haven't seen it yet, the FAA is investigating the Colorado Rockies, who we will we'll head to Colorado and play them on Monday for a four-game set. <laughs> Don't go in the cockpit when you head there on Monday, okay? Yeah, seriously. So tell, tell everybody kind of what happened. But they're under investigation right now. And again, <laughs> people love to post their crimes, I guess, on social media, which is part of the problem. This is like the hardest I've laughed at a long time. Hensley Mullins, who's the um, 
uh, hitting coach for the Rockies posted a video of himself sitting in the cockpit of the plane, like pretending to fly it. Uh, and you, you can't, you can't do that. Can't do that. You can't do that. And the FAA is investigating uh, United Airlines. And it's pretty open and shut case, Rockies. actually. Here, now there's so many funny things about this, right? Like this doesn't happen. This could happen to any organization, right? It's just like one person breaking a rule and the yeah. pilot letting them in. But that it is happening to the Rockies, who are a jambalaya of disorganization, is just the most fitting thing ever. It, and that it happened at altitude and it's the Rockies. Like, I can't stop laughing at this story. It's all so good. Now, it, Jay, you're a younger guy, but back in the day, like when Woods and I were kids, sometimes they'd let kids come up and come see the cockpit during the plane. The pilot would be nice. Say, hey, would you like to come up and and see the controls and they'd it's invite you up there. Flight. It was during a flight. Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was during a flight. Before 9 11, after. things were very different but in this I, world. I never <laughs> flew a plane when I was a kid. I got the airline wings and yeah. all that, but I never got to sit no. and fly it. When I was a kid, I used to be able to do tax evasion on a plane. <laughs> Nowadays, you can't do anything. World's changed. Uh, don't, go, don't do this. If, if, if Who on the Padres? Is the most likely Ooh. to accidentally get in trouble for this? Is Ooh. Oh, that's like, a good question. Who who's like let me into the cockpit? I think Musgrove. Like maybe I, I just <laughs> that in. He's the one who would be able to like swoon yeah. or convince the pilot yeah. to like let him in to try it out. Because it actually he's wouldn't a very surprise me if Joe guy. knew how to like if had Joe knew how it's licensed. Fly. And... Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, that's true. That's funny. I wanted to ask you. We're talking to our pal uh, Jake from Cespedes Family Barbecue on a grand hey. old Friday. I want to ask you about Paul Skeens because every time this dude pitches, I, I am, am, am enamored with Marvel at um, his raw stuff. He's down in AAA and just continues to be stri- you know striking guys out at a pretty torrid pace right now. Uh, looks pretty unhittable. Looks like he's filled with all the confidence in the world now. The Ranger, Texas Rangers, you know, more careful with uh, Jack Leiter came up. Didn't have the best debut yesterday. Still has really good stuff, but. When do you expect a Paul Skeens to make his debut for the Pirates, who are a, a fun team? So let's let's do this first. Comparing Jack Leiter and Paul Skeens is, at one point in time, would have been rep- re- responsible. <laughs> now, irresponsible now. They are two different. <laughs> they are two different species yes. of pitchers because Jack Leiter drafted second overall, famous last name, has backed up since he was drafted. The fastball commands all over the place. The secondary stuff hasn't progressed. And at this point, he's like, looks like a back end guy, unfortunately, for the Rangers. And he debuted yesterday, and you could see the issues with his pitch mix right away. Paul Skeens Nasty. is a moose. I mean, this guy, on a physicality perspective, is unlike any pitcher I've really seen. It's just like there's a thickness to him that is remarkably jarring. He looks like a tight end, and not in a way where he's not like ripped. He's just like, he's a moose, man. He's a moose. Yeah, when thick, do I expect man. him to get yes. called up? Uh, uh, I would say in a month or so, he's amazing. The fastball velocity is a joke. He really knows how to pitch. I will say this though. If you're clamoring for skeins, totally get it. Go watch Jared Jones. Oh, hundred percent. Who the pirates already have, who they've already called up. I, did he face the no. Padres? Am I mistaken? No, we haven't seen him yet. No, you haven't seen him yet. Okay. I saw him in person this week against the Mets. I, I can't, it's unbelievable. Like if Skeen, Skeens comes up and is Jared Jones, that's a win. Wow. Jared Jones is soaring hundred miles an hour. He's 22 years old. He's getting swings and misses in the strike zone. I think he had 16 swings and misses against the Mets, a team that makes a ton of contact. He threw 59 pitches to get through five innings and they pulled him and then they yeah. blew the game. Jared Jones, I think is already one of the best 15 pitchers in baseball. And if Paul Skeens comes up and does three quarters of what Jones has accomplished, everyone will be thrilled. Through so eight, in he's that game, cool. Jones already here. In that game that you saw, this is staggering. Twenty-two year old, eighty-five percent of his pitches were strikes. Eighty-five yeah. percent strikes against, like you said, a, a team that makes a lot of good contact. Future uh, very bright in Pittsburgh and and really really good young position players as well uh, coming up through that system. It's fun. Reminds me a little bit, uh, Jake, of of your Orioles. And uh, it, it's just got to be fun to watch these guys on a daily basis. I know Jackson oh. Holiday has has struggled a little bit. It, you know, it's to be expected. A little bit surprising that our Jackson has gotten off to such a hot start. Uh, but what are you seeing out of your Orioles right now early in the season? Dude, they 
bang. They just bang. Everyone bangs. Everyone on the team rakes, except for Jackson Holiday for right now. Um, and it's not just that the guys who were top prospects have come up and been good, right? Like Gunnar Henderson and Adley Rushman. It's the, like Ryan O'Hearn, yeah. who they snatched off the scrap heap from the Royals after he was butt there for a couple of years, has been, I think he has the third best hard hit rate in baseball. I think it's like Otani, Bobby Witt Jr., Ryan O'Hearn. And and sure, great. Cedric Mullins has gotten hot. Anthony Santander is starting to hit. But what's been very interesting watching the lineup with Holiday in it, so he hits ninth and Henderson hits first. So what's been happening is like Holiday strikes out on a fastball in the strike zone because he's learning how to play baseball still. And then the lineup turns around to Henderson and he gets the exact same pitch and hits it like a thousand miles an hour somewhere <laughs> in the field. And you're like, oh, I can't complain about Jackson Holiday. Like we have a different one who's already amazing, right? And so things are, it is the part in the movie. This is what being an Orioles fan is like right now. The part of the movie where everything is so good, it's about to go wrong, right? Like that is the energy. Everyone is happy and whimsical and smiling. And it just feels like there's another shoe to drop, but that's just fandom trauma. That's just baseball speaking. fandom. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, Jake Mintz from yeah. Cespedes Family Barbecue is with us. And on your Yahoo Sports platform this week, Jake, you wrote about Marlins manager Skip Schumacher. Now, mm -hmm. we are not objective no, when it comes to objective. Skip. In fact, there's a better than average chance he's listening right now in his office in Miami somewhere with his coaching staff. But I want to get your perspective, a little more neutral, objective, outside viewpoint of what's going on with the Miami Marlins coming off an incredibly exciting, surprising, great season manager of the year. There should have been a lot of a momentum and excitement. And somehow they've all just killed that in Miami as fast as possible. Like they were trying to, like well, they tried to, they, they're yeah. like, it feels like they're the major league franchise in Cleveland. That was trying to move to Miami, except they're already in Miami. <laughs> Okay. What's going so, on? It's a very <laughs> they're trying to move to Cleveland, actually. <laughs> uh, it's it's a complicated situation. Okay. I know that you all love Skip. We love and Skip. Skip is a singular presence in the sport. Like I in talking around with people and reporting this article out, I did not hear a single negative thing about Skip. Like at all from anybody on or off the record. I was floored by the reputation this guy has earned for himself. Okay. So that's important to understand. Skip almost certainly is not going to be managing the Miami Marlins next season. That is a given. He asked the front office or the ownership group to void his option for next year so that he can, in my understanding, explore the market, right? Now, how did we get to this point? I actually think that most of the people in this scenario are, are operating rationally. The ownership group, Bruce Sherman, led by Bruce Sherman, who has been pretty frugal, looked at the organization that Kim Ang was leading and saw success at the major league level and very little else. The infrastructure that the Marlins had in place under Kim, under, under Kim Ang, was not great, okay? That, that should not take away from what she accomplished at the big league level to build the team that made the playoffs last year. Like, that's awesome too. So what Sherman tried to do was go in and hire someone above Kim to like build the infrastructure up. And that's where the big mistake was because Kim totally reasonably said, I'm not going to stick around and have you hire someone over me. I just took you to the playoffs with yeah. like $25. Okay. So she leaves that pisses skip off understandably because they had a good relationship. New guy comes in Peter Bendix, who I like, and I think is, a, is going to do a good job there. And he looks at the situation and goes, this is not a good baseball team. I don't think we can win. And so they don't spend. And then once they have injuries to Yuri Perez, um, who's like a big, big piece for them and Sandy Alcantara is missing all year. Like this is not a good team that can compete. And so they don't sign anybody. And now we're at a point where they're like, you know, one in 75 to start the year and skip has become a lame duck manager. And it's all very bizarre. It's all very uncomfortable. I just have so much faith that skip is going to maintain his skipness yes. throughout it all and show up at the yard every day and have good process and help the players around him get better. Even if he knows he will not be managing the next good Marlins team. But what's really interesting. One more thing is what skip does from here, right? Because he is pretty much accepted as one of the best five to 10 managers in the game already, which is amazing considering it's just a second year. 
And so he's going to hit the managerial free agent market this year and probably get pretty good pay to lead a team. And it's going to be interesting to see what jobs open up and which jobs skip is going to want to take. And, you know, we'd have no idea what he wants and what sense there is there. Uh, but it's just a really interesting storyline to keep an eye on. I think Jake kind of nailed that yeah, pretty I, I well. Do too. Yeah, I do too. Very I think good. He nailed that on the uh, the good stuff on on Skip Schumacher and the uh, the Miami Marlins. Thank you, buddy. Go oh. read that. I actually, you know, I did a lot of reporting for that. Good. I can, good I can tell jokes, guys, but I also <laughs> you did do a little reporting. Guy. Yeah, no, you're you're reporting from from what our sources tell us. <laughs> it's fairly accurate. <laughs> We've got a good one. Yeah, we got a good one. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you. Take care, Jake. Yeah. Have a good weekend. Uh, our weekly segment with uh, the Cespedes Family Barbecue guys, Jake and Jordan, brought to you by Grand Old Barbecue. E Asado, if you go up to the uh, the Flynn Springs location, also in North Park and at the ballpark, you can check them out this weekend while you're at Petco Park. I was just telling the uh, the missus we need to make the trek out to Grand Old pretty soon as with the family. Fun, fun place. I, I drove to pick up some barbecue on a Sunday because I had to get out of my house, um, and it was, it was delightful. But I want to go sit and eat and enjoy myself uh, out there. So that's going to happen in the next few weeks for sure. When we uh, come back, I want to uh, – do we have some audio of our beloved Sammy Levitt? Yes. From last night? Got to do Does a anyone know what Sammy was up to last night? On what should great. have been an off day? No. Bro, just take a day. It's no okay. day it's okay. off do it. Sam Levitt. He's such a – he's just showing us all up. You'll find out know, what he I was up like to. That. Coming up next after a check of traffic here on 97.3 The Fan.
think we've made the point a couple of times that the baseball season is a grind, not just for players and coaches and staff members, but for people who have to cover the team on a daily basis like broadcasters and pre- and post-game show hosts. Sammy Levitt's going to be working, what, like 162 out of 180 days the rest of the year. So those days that are truly off are rare and special and appreciated. And you certainly wouldn't expect him to go out of his way to go work another baseball game on the days that he actually does have off. But where was Sammy Levitt last night? None it went nowhere else than Lake Elsinore, California. Yeah, with Jackson Merrill, too, who was also Surely there. just sitting there and taking in the game, right? Never had been to the Diamond before, he said, and uh, had a chance to go up. But no, not just as a fan. He was invited into the broadcast booth of the Lake Elsinore Storm as a guest announcer calling play-by-play in the middle innings and doing a color commentary the rest of the time. And I, I clicked in just to listen to the online stream for a, an inning or two in the middle of the game, and he was outstanding. Of course, Sammy did sod poodles and uh, what, Corpus Christi did some uh, minor league baseball play-by-play in the past. A, a lot and of it. He's done a lot of it, and he was quite... Quite good, quite sharp, sounded outstanding uh, doing doing the game. And he ap- actually got a pretty cool game last night uh, against the Visalia Rawhides. Uh, Sammy called as the Storm came back to tie the game at six in the middle innings. It was still 6-6 in the bottom of the ninth. Uh, the Storm had the winning run on base. And Dylan Head, who is probably almost certainly the top prospect that the Padres have currently at the Lake Elsinore Storm, at the plate, batting there from the left side, and, and here's how it sounded. New delivery. That one's going to be flared to left field and drop in for a base hit. Are you That's not, not entertained? That's not Sammy. That's the other guy. As Dylan Sammy's Head coming. wins it for Lake Elsinore. Are you not <laughs> what a moment, and what a nice piece of hitting for Dylan Head. Yeah. He serves right into left field against the hard throwing Isaya. And Dylan Head with a wonderful early moment this season in Lake Elsinore. What an ending. Uh, what a pro. Guy sounds fantastic. He's he can do it all. He can do it all. He is the best. I love that guy. I'm not I'm not surprised that he went out and did that because he loves doing play by play. That's what his passion is. And so when given the opportunity, you're going to on a day off. He's also young and has no children. So when you're young and have no children, you are you have boundless energy. Boundless. And you don't work mornings, right? You have boundless. You can do. You went, I used to go to work eight-hour days and go to happy hour and go out and play things, softball during the week. All kinds of fun stuff. Sammy's young. He's spry. He's going to be just fine. And what a great, great job he did. Um, yeah, he's he's what an elite find for this radio so station. So according to Sammy's Twitter feed, uh, the other guy in the booth was Robbie Loya calling uh, Storm Games. Also, the uh, according to his Twitter bio, the uh, Cal State University Fullerton uh, play-by-play broadcaster. Good for him, Robbie. A, a lot, I see people going, oh, Sammy's, I mean, Sammy's voice is going to be pretty solid compared to anyone's. I thought Robbie did a nice job on that uh that winning call there it was fun. It was it was you know minor league exactly what you'd want to hear in a situation like that. Had all the particulars in place, but that was uh, it was fun to hear Sammy doing some play by play. Always last night. fun. Sammy's the goat. Great but he'll work, be back. Uh, he'll be back at Petco Park tonight in the Western Metal Supply Company building in the loft for the Eco Water SoCal pregame show beginning at uh, five forty this evening as the Padres take on the Toronto Blue Jays in the first of a quick three game series, and it's right back on the road. Again, for your Padres next week as they head to Coors Field uh, Monday through Thursday for a four-game series against the Rockies. First interleague series of the season for the Padres. Uh, last year they went to Toronto, so this year uh, they get to see Toronto. And this is the uh, the new, the second year of the new balanced schedule, which Tony Gwynn Jr. was not a big fan of during our roundtable yesterday. You like you like the balanced schedule. I, just, I mean, I, it literally does not affect my life in any way, shape, or form. 
None what doesn't affect me, not with travel. It doesn't affect me one bit. I like seeing new players. It affects your mental state when you don't have to face the Rockies 19 times a year. It's a, so, yes. It's, and the and Dodgers the 19, 19 times. 19 times yes. a year. And, I know, and the Giants and the Dodgers. Yeah, I mean, Chris Ello said yesterday, I, I want to be playing the Giants and Diamondbacks. And I can see his point there. It's, you know, but again... I do enjoy seeing other players from other teams come to Petco Park. Also, always a uh, nice little recruiting trip for some of these guys, maybe that have never played in San Diego. You know what I mean? Honestly, like, this isn't the worst place to show off to a uh, a, a player that's going to be hitting his arm years in a couple <laughs> years and like, oh, yeah, I would play here. For me, I think it's just a more fair way to do it because – when you're competing for a wild card spot against teams in other divisions, you really want the schedules to be as similar as possible. And while you're always going to play more games against your division rivals, when you were playing close to 80 games against your division rivals, like 18 to 20 games against the Dodgers, Giants, Rockies, and Diamondbacks, that's a completely different schedule than the teams in the Central that were playing those same number of games against the 100%, the Reds man. and the Pirates. It's just going to be way easier for a decent team in the Central in an unbalanced schedule. You're so right. To make the playoffs as a wild card. And you shouldn't just be kept out of the playoffs, even though you had a really good team, because you just had to play a much tougher schedule yeah. every year. Yeah, and balancing it out a little bit, to me, is just the most fair way to handle it. And it, when it comes to a league that's going to have wild card spots for a postseason, I, I couldn't agree more. And it's a it's a great point you make. You know, I'm on board with that. But I just hearing Tony, I, I listened to that part yeah. of the roundtable, and I just hadn't really considered or remembered the way it used to be and how you do control your own destiny in a sense that you have 85 games against your division. It's, it gets you so take old, care of business though. in those games, God, but yeah, it's very it monotonous. Gets so but in the old, old days, when the only way to make the playoffs was winning your division, right. of course, that, yeah. that makes a lot more right. sense. But now that there's wild cards and there's really sure. one big standings of the entire National League, and that's the one that is often the most important, it, it makes less sense to play so many games against your own division rivals. Yeah, it does. It does. And I, I'm, I'm in favor of it. It's Again, for me, as a baseball fan, it's fun seeing new teams come in. It's it's fun to see Vladdy Jr. It's fun, fun to see Bo Bichette. Fun to see these guys. And, and again, the, the arms they're bringing in. I mean, good. if you like baseball, these are three good arms they're bringing in. And, and it's going to test this team's medal, which is also what you want, right? You want them, let's go against the best need realignment it's from everything i've heard it's coming as it's soon coming. as they get to 32 yeah it'll look like the nfl with four four team divisions in each league but while they're still at 15 and 15 in the american and the national league i don't think there's going to be a change coming yet all right we'll come back uh, paulie's got some headlines with an early round report then don't forget Top of the hour, it's the manager's report with Mike Schilt, brought to you by SDCCU. We'll talk with the skipper at 9 a.m., all coming up still this morning with Ben Woods on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Well, that was a chaotic break. <laughs> it was. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, give me a second, and we'll update you on everything that's happening in our in our studio momentarily. We also have a Rindel report coming up, and don't forget Mike Schilt, the manager of the San Diego Padres, just back from their road trip, uh, will join us coming up at the top of the hour in our manager's report. Right now, let's get a quick check of traffic here on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Traffic is sponsored by Valvoline Instant Drive to Oil Change, your 15 minute instant drive to Oil Change. You guys got this overturn crash on eastbound 54 past the 805. It's blocking the right lane. Big rig involved in this one, so it looks like they may have to shut that transition ramp to the east 54 down to help clear that. The Cordell and Cordell traffic cam shows that crash has cleared on northbound 15 just before Arrow Drive. Valvoline Instant Oil Change is your drive through oil change. It only takes 15 minutes and you don't have to get out of your car. With all the rain lately, Valvoline is also offering replacement wiper blades for directions and discounts. Go to SoCalOilChange.com. SoCalOilChange.com. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben & Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. And get things started here with our edition, today's edition oh, of boy. the Rindle Report. Now tune into the month greatest. Welcome to the Rindle Report with Paul Rindle. Hi, Paul. All right. Two stories from the world of sports that we haven't gotten to yet. We'll start off in Major League Baseball. And one story that you didn't know you needed. Are you laughing, Biot? It's the Rindle Report. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Okay, how are you? On 97.3 The Fan. Are you ready to bless the mood? I need some help, please. <laughs> that was good. Can I get a hoist? All right. All right. All right. Gentlemen, how we doing? Fantastic. Good. Good. Start off, uh, I got a note in college basketball here that uh, pertains to the local San Diego State Aztecs. Saw that yesterday uh, it was announced that the 2024 Acrisure Classic. Acrisure. Acrisure. Get it today. No idea. I don't know what it means. I think it's uh, an why? insurance company. Acrisure. Yeah. Insurance company. Call your doctor if it lasts more than four hours. Oily stool. No. <laughs> Insurance. Diarrhea. Insurance. Acrisure. Well, the 2024 Acrisure Classic is the Palm Springs College Basketball Tournament taking place in November. Okay. At, San Diego State was... At Acrisure uh, Arena. At Acrisure Arena. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> San Diego State was going to be playing in that, along with USC, Arizona State, St. Mary's. But when it was announced yesterday, San Diego State was not on the list. In fact, uh, New Mexico Lobos were on the list. Okay. And we talked about this uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe maybe a month ago month now. Ago, yeah. I was telling you guys about this new NIL tournament that is rumored to be happening. Not rumored. I mean, it's happening. Yes. In Las Vegas sometime in November where teams are basically playing for money, for NIL money. The winning team, I think it's a uh, It's like a million, 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 million bucks. bucks or something, something like that. Something yeah. like that. The runner-up gets a million in the tournament and uh, divvy it up amongst all their players, and it's a fantastic idea. And San Diego State was rumored to be one of those teams, and with them not listed on the uh, Acrisure Classic, which it, was at the same weekend, it's time to get Ben's tea leaves out mm. to read them. These, yeah, these ones are pretty. These ones are pretty clear. Actually, you have not read the tea leaves. Yeah, in so a while. you're only allowed to play in one multi-team event, an MTE, in the preseason. Uh, the Aztecs have had a fairly regular schedule. They do the Maui Invitational every four years. Mm -hmm. They do the wooden classic or whatever that one right. is in orange county they do the one the other one in hawaii and now uh the continental tire arena one in vegas which they did last year it seems like they were switching it out though when they were going to do this palm springs one but now that they're pulling out of that it sounds oh. like they got a better opportunity for this uh this nil tournament i asked around and my sources are telling me it is in fact because san diego state pulled out of the palm springs tournament so they can play in the las vegas tournament that's not officially announced but that is that's what's happening that's so, good san diego state it's uh it's a sign again of, of brian dutcher being creative knowing that san diego state's never going to have the the kind of NIL money that Duke or Connecticut or some of the, the you know Kentuckys of the world have, but they still need to be able to provide some of the NIL opportunities for their players. If they want to keep getting good players yep. and not losing oh, yeah. them to the transfer portal, <laughs> you gotta provide something. And while you know they have the Aztec link and the Mesa Foundation and they were getting players 
you know, not nice five-figure NIL deals. To get some real money, they're going to have to get creative. And this tournament is one way where, I mean, think about that. If, if you were giving your players twenty to 40000 in a year, if they can get $2 million in one tournament and spread that among a 12, 13-person roster, oh, yeah. that, that absolutely skyrockets That's the killer. NIL money <clears throat> for San Diego State in just one season right there. That helps with recruiting, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, hey, we're playing in this tournament. The chance to win some real money. That's pretty cool. So one more time, that NIL tournament that San Diego State will, in fact, be playing in. It's called the Players' Era is what they're calling the tournament. It's going to be at MGM Arena in Las Vegas. And they're starting with eight teams this year. And then next year, it'll be uh, 16 teams. Killer. Every team participating gets a million bucks. The winning team gets another million dollars so that's awesome and then you know we're not too far removed from the ncaa tournament everybody filled out their brackets so you recognize some of these names that were also rumored to be a part of that alabama duke fau houston kansas Oregon, St. John, Syracuse, Virginia. Some good ass company. That's yeah. what it boils That's down the to. Too. You want it's, to be it's in. some good company. That's where you want to be. And uh, I think one of the starters on FAU entered the transfer portal and their point guard. And San Diego State is one of the teams he's looking at to to switch to. Nice. Which would be a, a nice pickup for for Brian Dutcher here if they can land mm-hmm. that guy. Uh, this is good. This is a good point from Satan's Blowfish. She says, "You want to keep your players sharp in the off season? Can't think of a better motivator than a cash tourney. Yeah, hundred no percent, man." Hundred no percent, really cool. I mean, what's do the math? What's two million if you win the tournament? What's two million divided by call it thirteen players? Yeah. I mean, that's that's some good money right there. What do you got, Benny? Uh, according to the calculator, two million divided by thirteen players is about one hundred fifty grand each. Not too shabby. Come on, not yeah. too shabby. Yeah. Like yeah, I and like even it. if you spread that out, you can't probably plan it every single year. Yeah, but even if you spread that out over you know three or four seasons, that's still. Could be an extra thirty, forty grand per player for like four years yeah. worth of nil. That's more than they're getting like for one season. This is a huge well, that was opportunity. Two million split up was one hundred and fifty grand. So just for playing in the tournament, yep. everybody's getting 75 about seventy five grand. grand. Yeah. Pretty solid. No yeah. problem with that whatsoever. Now, uh, earlier in our seven o'clock hour, Woodsy, you admitted you were watching NHL playoffs last night. Correct. Except it wasn't, wasn't the, the playoffs. playoffs. No, it was last. It wasn't game. even the play-in tournament. No, these, they don't have one. Neither team uh, was is going to the playoffs. Yeah. You were you were watching the Marlins taking on the Rockies yeah. at the end of the season, essentially. That's exactly what I was watching. <laughs> big hockey night for you. So you're a big hockey guy. You remember Gordy Howe, of course, of course. right? Yeah, Hartford Whalers for a time. So Gordy Howe, he uh, one of his many milestones was that he was the oldest player to play professional hockey. Uh, he was 52 years and 11 days old when he played his final NHL game back he, in 1980 he looked every 52. he looked every bit of 52 also i mean he looked like your granddad well, everyone always everybody looked older did back then we've we've talked about this 52 years old well that record has gone away now remember what? Wil- wilford brimley was our age when he yeah, was in cocoon 40 years old. everyone just looked older back then now he this was like 75 not, years old <laughs> this was not in the nhl but yaromir yager played professional hockey <laughs> last night for the first time since he turned 52 and he scored, and he, he surpassed Gordy Howe to become the oldest player to take regular, you know, get regular playing time in a professional hockey match. Yeah, but Gordy Howe played in the friggin' NHL. This was <laughs> uh, he rejoined the Kladno Knights, a top team from the Czech Republic. Okay, where he's from. Yeah, I mean Gordy's still your champ in the NHL. I mean it was unbelievable. Fifty-two yeah. years old, the oldest. It was Yager's sixteenth game. The team his. 36th season in professional hockey. That's amazing. The oldest baseball player technically was Satchel Paige. He yeah. came back at age 59, but he had, wasn't playing regularly. Right. He just came and appeared in a game. Um, Modern-wise, Jamie Moyer was the like modern player who lasted the longest. He pitched until he was uh, 49 and a half in Major League Baseball. I feel like he was still effective. The too. oldest player right now is Justin Verlander. At 41 years old when he yeah. comes wow. back and gets started. Interesting. I didn't think he would be the oldest, but I didn't that either. makes sense. I guess it does. <laughs> they're, not even, they're not even signing 34-year-olds anymore right now in no. Major League Baseball. All right, and then finally, we uh, opened the show talking about some new music from one Taylor Swift. Yeah. Have you guys heard of her? New Music Friday. New You're Music Friday. Words. It's a big day. Big day. Uh, Pearl she's Jam, a uh, country artist, right? I remember. Yeah, I she's remember uh, dating some football player. Okay. Yeah. She uh, so she released her new album last night albums. at midnight. Albums, yeah, it was. So she did she did it with her last album. Midnight's came out at midnight, and then at three a.m., three hours later, 
the 3 a.m. edition came out with like twice as many songs. It's insane. She did it again last night with the new album with a 2 a.m. version with like it's got 34 total songs or something. It's bananas. But uh, I was wondering if you uh, listened to any of the Pearl Jam album that came out last night as well. So it was a, you know, dark uh, dark matters. Dark matters. As a long time Pearl Jam fan. Uh, I did, and I like it. I like it a lot. The single Dark Matters is really good. Uh, and then they put out a couple songs yesterday, and I listened to them, and I liked those a lot. I was texting with a buddy. We discovered Pearl Jam together many, 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 many. You m- discovered Pearl Jam. You signed them? No, we were together <laughs> when we discovered Pearl oh, okay. Jam. And, and uh, Other people had already discovered them before yeah. you did. Though. And I got, it was a, like a sound warehouse, and I had a gift card, and I went into Sound Warehouse, and I bought some, you know. <laughs> is that... Is that different than the warehouse? I remember W H E R E H the video and the store, right? You're talking it's about sound warehouse, yeah. I didn't. We didn't have those down. Right, well, we just had the warehouse. Okay, we had sound warehouse. Sound warehouse. Yeah, that's where we went. Okay, and we walked in. I don't know. <laughs> so we walked in, and I, I had this money to spend, and I bought a couple things, and I asked the guy for a recommendation, and it was sitting on like a display. It was Pearl Jam ten. He goes this one, and I go, oh, cool. I'll, where can I get it? He goes, Where we don't have any more. I go, I'll buy that one. And he goes, All right, fine. So he sold me the one that had already been open. <laughs> and I went in, we put it in the car, and we went, Oh my God, this is unbelievable. It was great. And um, I like the new sound. Uh, and it's when a band gets older, are they, they not get... grunge anymore? Or are they no, different? Grunge is dead. That's not, dead. It's not typical grungy Pearl. It's Jam. just like. When you get used to it does like when you're when your f- f- band from your youth gets old it's just a, it's a weird feeling like very few are able to keep it riding where you're like i can't wait for the new record like i know it's gonna be good so i'm into it so far i really want to see them in concert again uh because they put on i mean they'll play for three hours and they'll play a different set every night i'm really hoping for a sphere residency where i can go and do that again because that was you literally just want every band you've ever loved <laughs> so to much. play the sphere now in one day you can do a 24-hour <laughs> concert of all my the favorites Woods sphere music festival, festival. Maybe I'll start sphere. working on that uh no it, it, it's so it's so far so good uh i'm gonna listen to the whole thing today for sure would uh would the tier one support us if we did a ben and woods live Please as don't. the sphere no adam will call me later today <laughs> hey it's not a bad idea and I'm going to go. Are you guys serious? Odyssey, we're going to need $58 million to set that up just Way to more. get started. Way more. He will call me. Should we do a music festival? <laughs> Bro, please. Please. It's just let me enjoy my Friday. Thank you, Polly. Thank you, Polly. All right. So we had some chaos here, and it involved a couple of food drops while we were in our last break. Uh, first of all, I want to. Uh, Thank the guys at uh, SDCCU came by and brought some uh, donut bar donuts to remind everyone, don't forget to vote for SDCCU in the San Diego's best poll in the Union Tribune, which is up now. It's their annual like Reader's Favorites Awards where you go online and you can vote for the next few weeks for your favorite restaurants and servers and and all Radio different shows. kinds of Radio yes, shows. all different kinds of goods and services. Like they they're in the banking category, we're in the media category, and you can actually vote for Ben and Woods for best radio show, best morning show, and best drive time show in that poll as well. So donut forget thanks to SDCCU to vote for them and us. In the UT Readers poll. And if you're at it, you can also vote for Best San Diego Television Sportscaster, oh. which uh, I am also nominated for, if you'd like to uh, include who the, me. Who are the nominees? Do you remember? Let's see. The nominees are, I've got them right here. Ben Higgins, KGTV Channel 10, ABC. Mm. Brandon Stone, KUSI Channel 951 Independent. Darnay Tripp, KNSD Channel 739. Derek Togerson, KNSD Channel 739. John Howard, KFMB Channel 8, CBS. And Troy Hirsch. KSWB Channel 5 Fox. So you've easiest, got six choices. Easiest decision Thank you. I've ever made. Thank you. Darn A trip. What? And it's not Run even off. close. Darn it's A. not even particularly close. He just crushes he it. He crushes it. Huge Darn Troy A trip. Troy is very offended right now. I but... love Troy too. I played ball with him at uh, Fantasy Camp, but he's no Darn A. <laughs> Nobody's Darn A trip. That's my guy. Is it Are you easy? serious? Really? It's an easy no. choice. <laughs> it's like a moronically easy choice. I mean, I'm looking at this logically, and and Darnay is great, but he and Derek, they're the same station. They're both nominated. They're That's gonna, true. They're going to cancel some of their votes out, which I think leaves me now as as the favorite. Hmm. You think you're the favorite? 
Well, I'm listed first. I believe it's alphabetical by first name, but I am listed first there. That's got to be a good sign. That's got to be a very good sign. Ben comes before Brandon, comes before Darn Hay, yeah. comes before Derek. That's right. John, and then poor Troy, T, near the end of the alphabet, he's listed last. You can't go wrong with all those selections. They're all great dudes and, and talented in their own right. But, yeah, it's far and above Darn Hay trip. It's easy. Huh. That's an easy one. Uh, and then we also have Home State <laughs> coming in with some breakfast tacos. Oh so we are fully loaded for breakfast this morning. Roll me out of here today. <laughs> Had the Trinity taco oh, with it's... a little of the uh, the green, the tomatillo salsa. It's so fantastic. outstanding every time. Oceanside, go get some in you. Incredible. Incredible breakfast tacos. Right there, Vista Way. You just head yep. west, and it says uh, before you hit the ocean at the, uh, in the 101, you're going to see Home State right there. Outstanding. So we are now full. And we still have an hour to go. And we got the manager coming up next. Mike Schilt will join us for the manager's report when we return with Ben and Woods on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. Stay tuned for The Skipper coming up next.
Final hour of Men and Woods, Padres, very successful road trip, going four and two through Los Angeles and Milwaukee, uh, two very talented teams. So we think we all would have signed up for that. But then you get greedy, and you want the sweep at the end, and <laughs> you wish that they could have just played it a, a couple of runs and, and stolen that last game. Yeah, that's baseball, though. They, they had to feel pretty good. Uh, coming back, the Padres open a three-game series against the Toronto Blue Jays tonight. And joining us right now on our manager's report, brought to you by San Diego County Credit Union. It's not big bank banking. It's better. The skipper of the San Diego Padres, Mike Schilt, is back with us here on a Friday. Mike, good morning to you. Congratulations on the, uh, the road trip. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, good road trip. Always wanted better, but pretty, pretty darn good. Yeah, I think everyone was, you know, once you once you take a step back, right? Like Ben just said, we everybody wanted to plate plate that run, especially with the way Michael King pitched. Uh, Skip, he was he was unbelievable that day, and and you want to win that for him, and uh, it, it's got to be tough. You know, we've never been in the the locker room after a game like that, but he's got to feel pretty pretty proud of the way he pitched. Yeah, I mean, I won't speak for him, but yeah, he threw the ball very very well, and. You know, I mean, I had no hit stuff through seven and, uh, you know, was able to hit his spots and had all the pitches working and in com- control what he was doing, commanding the baseball. It was well-pitched game. We'd obviously like to scratch a couple for him. You know, you as a manager, when you have a pitcher like Michael King, and, and every pitcher's different, right? Back in, in, in the St. Louis days, you probably had guys that said, no, no, if he gets there and it's the eighth, I'm letting him finish. But Michael King's a guy – that you know, you guys are expecting a, a lot more innings than he's used to throwing. You get a little nervous when he's throwing that well in seventh inning, and you're like, "Oh boy, I hear, I'm going to have to make a decision here pretty soon." Well, that's the job, um, and you know, you just evaluate as it goes. He's had an extra day prior, an extra day post. Um, yeah, I had I've had a lot of those decisions. A lot of different guys with a lot of different places where they're at in their careers and um, relative to innings and experience. So um, you know, you judge it, you weigh it, and um, you recognize he's working pretty efficiently and, you know, the eighth was, was starting to be a little bit of a push for him to go back out, um, and then have a longer at bat. And then the terrain ball that, um, you know, came off the bat was like an out, but just, you know, found a spot in foul territory based on positioning, which positioning was fine. Just, you know, it was like, okay. And then, you know, a couple of six, three, six pitch at bats and he had done his job. Yep. hundred percent. Now, of course, uh, you're going to need all of your starting pitchers to step up even a little bit more while you, Darvish, is on the injured list with the sore neck. Can you tell us uh, uh, anything about kind of the plan to, to cover here while you's going to be out the next couple of weeks? Well, we have a plan, clearly. Um, it'll come out as we go. <laughs> um, maybe it's not clear. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, it's good to know that you've got it's one. It's good to know you have one. I understand plan. why you won't necessarily <laughs> s- specify it out for us, Mike. I do understand that, but I have to ask the question. Absolutely. Good bolt, man. Good try. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I mean, um, you know, he's going to miss two to three starts, you know, um, and we'll just evaluate it. Definitely two. Um, and, you know, we're going to stay on rotation, that I can tell you. Um, and then we'll, we'll, um, you know, we'll, we'll declare a starter for tomorrow that we've got in mind. Okay. That is interesting because you could have, with the day off yesterday, you could have moved a couple of guys up and pushed some guys back, but so you're going to stay on rotation. And I, I saw the Milwaukee Brewers. They, they like extra rest. They, they kept Freddie Peralta back a day, uh, which we were all excited yep. about. And then their bullpen guys come in and <laughs> throw really, really well. It's baseball. Oh, dang, that's baseball. Um, what's, what is your thought on in terms of getting guys rest early in the season and, you know, just trying to, you know, cover all those innings and, and maximize the effectiveness of your pitchers throughout the year? Yeah, done that historically. It's um, voted well. Um, Going to continue to do it. You know, you mentioned Michael. You know, there's some there's some comfort level in being able to, you know, even Dylan the day before and being able to allow guys to go a little bit deeper in games. If if they, of course, they're throwing well, B, they're not working too hard. And, and part of the calculus also is the extra rest, which both Dylan and, and Michael will have, you know, had the day prior and will have the start next, an extra day. So, you know, I think it's important to look at the big picture of this thing over the still, you know, a longer season um, remaining and recognize that we trust guys to come up and help us out. Um, and then also, you know, be able to give those guys that extra day. 
Talking to the skipper, Mike Schilt, here on Ben and Woods this morning. And, you know, if you're not going to tell us your pitching plans, uh, Skip, I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm reluctant to ask about a uh, potential lineup switch. But people are talking about uh, Xander Bogarts. I know he's not off to the best start. And I know he's not happy about not being off to the best start. In the leadoff spot, he's going to get probably the most ABs. Of, not probably. He's going to get the most ABs of anybody uh, mm-hmm. in the lineup. Have you guys considered moving him down, taking pressure off him? Kind of where do you guys stand on that? Uh, there's a consideration for sure. Uh, continue to look at it. Um, you know, it's uh, you know as far as take the pressure off of them. Still I pressure, mean, yeah. It could be bases loaded, I mean, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's always some pressure to the game, but you know, it's also relative how people have handled it and their experiences. And you are talking about a guy that's been been through and won two World Series, so. Yep. Um, and he's had a ten plus year proven career that. You know, we're comfortable and confident he's going to be the player that he's been. Um, even more recently, the guy started the season pretty well for us. He's also been a part of the lineup that's um, done some pretty good things. Do recognize that, um, you know, there's a period lately that he's not, you know, been his, his best self, and, and that's part of it. And um, now recognizing, you know, what we need to do for him and for us. And um, But, uh, you know, regardless of what move we make relative where he hits in the lineup, um, when he walks up to the plate, I feel pretty darn good. We had our uh, Padres roundtable yesterday. Every Thursday, if you if you ever have a day off at home, you want to want to join us. You're Please always, don't listen. Please, you're I'm always welcome. You. Please not listen. don't no, listen. No, I want to come in studio. <laughs> oh, come in studio. Yeah, 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 that'd be great. But, but last, please don't like listen. last week, we had the same conversation about Manny Machado, and we all said, "Now we look silly because yeah, because Manny he's looks barreling it. absolutely fine." Is when you look at Xander, how as coaches do you evaluate and decide? the normal ups and downs of baseballs and struggles versus, okay, yeah, we really actually do need to work on and change some things, like things are not going well. How do you make that determination between whether one is just the normal, you know, struggles that's hard to hit a baseball and, yeah, this guy actually could use some changes in his swing or different some sort of philosophy needs to be changed somewhere? Well, a couple of things in fact there, and I like them all because the first one about – and I'm glad you admitted it. You know, you go through and you have these conversations. Um, some weeks it's nobody. Some weeks it's a one or two players because um, the game's hard. And, and rightfully, you're going to talk about the club at its best self. And, you know, so last week you're getting fielded questions about Manny. You can feel the innuendo. What are we doing? Is yep. it the Braggs? And you moving down. And it's like, and in my head, I'm going, that's, that's Manny. He's, he's fine. Um, and you're starting to see some, some good good swings and next thing you know he's you know driving balls all over the place and usually you don't hear anything else after that <laughs> right yeah no, that's fair that's, that's fair. exactly yeah. right you know hey yeah well last week the uh, sky was falling on manny mm-hmm. um and it clearly wasn't but i get that's part of the gig now specific to the question i think it's another good one you know what is the what is kind of the parameters that you look at in evaluating it um it's probably a bigger, fair, unfair. I think it's more than fair, actually, when you look at a player like a bogey, who I've already alluded to, that's got um, a tremendous amount of history um, of production and hitting. Um, and the thing about hitting is, is sometimes, again, you mentioned it, it's super hard, hardest thing doing all the sports. I wouldn't even argue that, but that's another time for another day. But um, And then you go, okay. Those typically, those guys, they can have something click, and it's like, boom, here they go, i.e. Manny last week. Um, so you're right around the corner with experienced guys that have gone through similar things. Then the next layer to that is, okay, how's the player mentally that you alluded to? You mentioned the physical part, the combination. Um, and there's just a lot of variables. Not a lot. But there's variables to it. There's conversation. There's a feel. Um and there's a belief system in it as well. So, you know, you evaluate all those things and, and you, you deal with what uh, you think is the best for the club at the at not only the moment, but also more of a, a little bit of a longer term. Because, you know, if you're constantly knee-jerking every time somebody doesn't perform, again, I've said this, and I will always say it, um, you know, you never want to underreact and, and, and just let things go and kumbaya. But you also don't want to overreact because I think that can be knee-jerking I, I can tell you from experience observing it and, and even, you know, doing it early in my career, it just, it doesn't work, you know, long-term when there's a 
cost. Oh, he's not doing well. Boom, you bounce, and nobody ever feels like they're comfortable or, or you have confidence in them. No, it's good to hear that. It's good to hear that explanation, talking to the skipper, Mike Schilt, on Ben and Woods. And, you know, one of the guys, it, it, it's great that you guys were able to win a couple games without without Jake Cronenworth. I know how valuable uh, he's been this season offensively and defensively. you got to credit Matthew Patton for one of the nicest plays down the line I think I've seen in years, uh, getting his opportunity, yeah. hits a triple. That was fantastic. Uh, but Jakey is a big, big part uh, of this lineup. How is he feeling? Can we expect to see him uh, mashing against the Blue Jays this weekend? I would expect him to be back in the lineup. Whether I mean, he's going to come in today. He had a good day yesterday again. Um, yeah, Matty Batten filled in very admirably. He made a nice play, hit the triple. Um, and but yeah, Crony's gosh, I mean, clearly stating the captain obvious how, how valuable he's been. Not only our lineup, but our club, our defense, the whole shooting match. Um, how he runs the base is just his presence and how he competes. But. Um, yeah, I expect to be back in, in at some point during this series, and you know we'll evaluate um, here in a couple hours, see how he's feeling, what I would have done that'll look like. Mike Schilt is with us, and and Mike, I know you're about winning, and and I know your guys are about winning, and it's it's serious, it's baseball, and and every game is important, but a baseball team is also a family that spends a lot of time together, and. Families uh, celebrate milestones. I'm just curious, so I'm sure you know. Today is Jackson Merrill's 21st birthday. He's already said it's just a day. He doesn't care. That kid. Will I don't, that be, I don't buy it. Will that be true for all of you, or do you? Th- is there anything special planned for uh, Jackson tonight? Do you, do you need me to jump out of a cake in the clubhouse? Because I can do it for you if you need it. <laughs> Ooh. Um, Pass. That's fine. Yeah, we may have to take you up on that. I want to see what that looks like. <laughs> no, you don't. But maybe I don't. You don't. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, we're going to celebrate it. You know, we're going to acknowledge it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there'll be something that uh, – I'm not sure, but, there's, you know, there's likely something that there'll be a cake and guys will, you know, celebrate and there'll be some good-natured fun with it. Um, to what degree some of the guys take it to it remains to be seen. But, you know, we'll we'll, uh, we'll celebrate with them at, at some point today. 21. That's incredible. It's I mean, crazy. So he's already he's already up. He's 20. He's turning 21. He's already a big leaguer and playing center field and really well out there too. It's and it's amazing. Playing great. He really is. Yeah. Remember to be 21. <laughs> Oh, man, I was a different person at 21 than Jackson Merrill is, uh, certainly. <laughs> That's it for... Oh, uh, I got one, oh, I got, got one more. I got okay. one more, yeah. And uh, thanks to the beef in the chat for reminding me. Um, we wanted to ask you about Donovan Solano oh, yeah. signing uh, about a week ago. We saw a couple of videos of him in Arizona. Not someone who was on our radar at all, but uh, has a good good track record. They call him Donnie Barrels because he, he hits the ball. Is uh, Are we expecting to see him, and is he kind of in your plans going forward potentially as a DH at some point or you can move him around a little bit uh, from what we understand? Yeah, I mean, I know time will tell on that one. Um, you know, that's a little bit, you know, the timing of that's, you know, more of a front office question. But I go back to Donovan Swan. He talked about youth in the game. Um, so I was with Donovan when he was 16 years old um, in the New York Penn League for the New Jersey Cardinals. Um this was like so, 20 years ago. Wow. This is yeah. This is this is not a, yeah. This is like 20 years ago. Um, and so I've had a long you know relationship with Donovan. Um, you know he can always hit. You know he can always hit and you know find the barrel as you said. And had just a real professional approach. And um, so you know relative to the timing, I'm not sure the the um, you know DH will be on the table. Um, you know at some point. Um, perhaps for him and maybe some other spots, but real pro and just, um, you know, takes a, takes a quality of bat for sure. All right. Uh, good luck against the uh, Toronto Blue Jays this weekend, then right back out on the road. But that that is the life. Uh, we'll talk to you again next Friday. Thank you so much, Skip. All right, guys. Have a good week. Appreciate there it. Is manager of the San Diego Padres, Mike Schill. Our manager's report brought to you by San Diego County Credit Union. It's not big bank banking. It is better. Thank you to the B for reminding me to ask about Donovan Solano. Kind of got the answer uh, we expected. I didn't realize his history with Donovan Solano went so far back, uh, 20 years when uh, Mike was still first coming up in the coaching in the deep minor leagues, and Donovan was a 16-year-old, what, international signing out of um, Colombia? Is that where he's from? I I don't ask. It's either Colombia or Venezuela. I think Colombia. And has made his way and, and had a pretty decent, if 
under the radar big league career for Donovan Solano uh, and and could be, as he said, an option at designated hitter once uh, Manny is back on the field. But uh, timing, he said, is more of a front office question, which I I knew. We have a fake A.J. Preller in the chat. He says he gives consent to bring him up. So Mike Schilt, if he needs him, he can bring him up according what if, to fake A.J. Preller. What if, what if it was, it the, was real? the real A.J. Preller thinking, no one's going to believe it's me, so I can say whatever I want. That's true. That's in true. In the chat. That's exactly right. We're also skeptical nowadays, yeah, especially I liked, online. Uh, I, liked it. I liked what he said, you know, and, and I do, it, it is, I, I think, refreshing to hear, you know, I mean, he knows. He knows that, that Xander's getting the most ABs at night and not swinging the bat well, and they've considered, you know, moving the lineup around a little bit, and, um, you know, hopefully that works. Hopefully that, that sparks. Yeah, taking pressure off somebody by moving them into the five hole, it's a different AB, certainly, but you could come up and leave, if you're not swinging it well, you come up and leave... 12 guys on, you know, feasibly in a night. That's not good. Yeah, we can react to that uh, when we come back. We get a couple more segments before Annie and Elston talk about what we just heard from Mike Schilt. After a check of traffic, more Ben Woods on the way on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Our thanks again to Padres manager Mike Schilt. I hope uh, I hope the tier ones are enjoying the regularity of those conversations as much as uh, I know I am. It's everything. It's everything. Period. The end. You know, it really is. And having a manager on every six weeks and be like, well, what happened in that game? And what happened in that game? And why did you do this? This is week to week, you know, and and that's it's everything. And it just makes it so much more enjoyable, in my opinion. That's just my opinion, though. And I do see a lot of people in the chat saying that was great. You know, he seems, you know, seems great. And th- he's a very thoughtful baseball man. I, I Somebody said in the chat, and I, I'd love to sit on a porch and drink beer with him <laughs> and talk about baseball. I go, yeah, that's the that's the dream. And he loves Or to talk- P.F. Chang's. Or P.F. Chang's. Or he way. is a He's a baseball rat, man. The guy loves, loves talking ball. And I... I like how candid, you know, he is. Now look, there's not he's not gonna be able to tell you things. Like somebody said somebody said, um, you mean Preller, you know, when he said about Solano, you know, and they're like, uh, a non answer. And I'm like, Well, yeah, I mean, that's not uncommon that the manager the manager doesn't typically do call ups and send downs. That's usually the general manager. True. So no. I'm, I'm sure they talk about oh, it. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, what possible usage they're yeah. going to have how for a guy. But you never want to specifically, oh, yeah, he's coming up on Monday. Like, that's the plan. Because things change, and then when it doesn't happen, then you you sound you sound like you lied or something. Right. And, and you don't ever want to set yourself up for those those circumstances when yeah. you don't have to. It's an unforced error. No, he's great. Basically to give away information that you don't have. And same when, you you know, we asked about, I asked about you, Darvish, and, you know, filling in. You don't need to tell the Toronto Blue Jays exactly what your plan is. He gave he actually gave a, a lot saying we're going to stay on rotation, which means after uh, tonight's game when Matt Waldron pitches, tomorrow's game is going to require some sort of plan, whether they call up a pitcher from the minor leagues to start or they set up a bullpen game, whether it's a, a Brito, Morejon, and get as many innings as you can out of your bullpen. But they're not going to move up. Joe Musgrove to to Saturday and then Dylan Cease to Sunday and Michael King to Monday. They want to make sure those guys have that extra day from the day off so they have five days in between starts instead of four. They want that extra rest. That's valuable just like it it was for Pat Murphy and the Brewers when they wanted to make sure Freddie Peralta got some extra rest. So they're not going to do that. It's not like a must-win game where they feel like they need their best starter on Saturday. They'll figure something out tomorrow be fun to see and and for possibly another start or two after that until you darvish is back it'll be fun to see and they may do three separate things in all three of those starts they they could go bullpen day saturday call someone up in coors field yeah Yeah. 100 percent. and you know the the thing is is it all baseball always looks so easy on the surface to say well it's simple you call up whoever's throwing the best and at triple a and he gets that spot start what if he goes an inning what if he goes a third of an inning gives up six runs it's a bullpen day then you're in a bullpen day. So the decisions you make affect everything else because I know that he won't tell you that he is, but he's absolutely thinking in the back of his mind, I got four games coming up in Colorado too. I've got to be very careful about what I do. He has to. And you have to. You've got a game plan for, you know, not only a week down the road, a month down the road. You know, and it's hard to do. And they say one inning at a time, one A, B at a time. And that's fine for the players, manager, the GM. they got to be thinking – he always talks about long term. Well, we got to be thinking long term. You know, we're only twenty one games into this thing. There's one hundred and forty games to go, so um, it, it is going to be interesting to see how they deploy what they have and how. He, and that's what Ed, Tony Gwynn Jr. said yesterday. This is what good teams do. They figure out a way to make it work. And even if you call up a, let's say you call up a guy Ben from AAA, and he doesn't really have the best stuff, but he gives you six innings, five innings. That's good. That's a that's a win in the organization's and, and, eyes. And look at what the Rangers did yesterday. They called up a, a prospect to yep. make a start. Wasn't particularly good. Gave him three innings. But you know, they won it. the game anyway. They did win they the game. They figured out a way to win the game. It, it was with the offense. And sometimes your offense is going to need to step up on days when you're not at full strength in your pitching rotation. There are multiple ways to win a baseball game. And you're going to have to win them all sorts of ways. Uh, with dominant pitching performances, just by sl- out slugging another team 12 to 11. You'll have those games throughout the course of the season. You just have to find out ways to win them. I also, for the record, I do agree with him for the most part when it comes to Xander Bogarts. And because he has established such a track record, not not for a few months or a season or two, but over the course of many years, 
of being a very good offensive player. You just have to ride it out. Now, it doesn't mean he has to bat leadoff, but you do have to just continue to play him until he figures out whatever's not going well, until he gets that moment that he gets locked in like Manny did, looks like about a week ago. And there's not too. Yeah, I mean, there's not much else you can do when it comes to Xander Bogarts. He's not going to get locked in by sitting on the bench for three days. No, it's not. He's not a high school kid. No, that got caught drinking. No, you know, <laughs> like it's, it's you're going to ride the bench and watch your teammates uh, play, and you're going to sit here and wear it. You know, you don't punish. They don't Xander punish Bogarts a guy for having for a, lack a slump. Of production. He's punishing himself enough. I'm sure. I'm sure in his own mind. Yeah, but he, you know, again, I, I, I would. I thought you you phrased it well though. The leadoff guy gets the most at bats. Yep. Do you want Xander getting the most at bats of anyone that's, right now? And that's what it boils even down to. Even my show goes. I mean, we've talked about it. Obviously, you can't ignore that aspect of it. Yeah, you can't stop him from coming up in clutch situations. You don't know Correct. where they're going to come up. The game, the most important at batter of the game could be the eight hitter or the six hitter or the nine hitter on any given day. But you do know that the number one hitter is on it. In whole, going to get more at bats than anyone else. And do you want Xander Bogarts getting more at bats than anyone else on your team right now? When there are eight other guys right now who are hotter than him in the lineup, and I would argue that the answer to that is a clear no. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. And I'd be I'd be surprised. You know, I'd be surprised uh, if if he was still leading off tonight. So now, but strange you, things you drop him down to seven, and he has three good days. I have no problem moving him right back up. Right once he gets going. Yep. I just for now, I'd, I'd move him down at least five, six deeper into the order than where he is. <clears throat> Encouraging <throat> news about Jake Cronenworth? Yeah. yeah, very. And if you read between the lines a little bit, he did talk about what's best for him, what's best for the team. Right? And he did. And he it, it sounds like that's something that they may have potentially addressed with this team after last season. When well, you have, I think they definitely I think they addressed it, it yeah, as well. I and I think that that was addressed by by not only management, but I think it was addressed by maybe some of the leaders in the room, too, of saying, hey, man, your numbers are your numbers. You're going to get them. You're good ba- Everyone's good baseball players. We have to do what's right for the what, San Diego Padres well, just first. From our I, do, conver- I do believe that. From our conversations with Manny in spring training, whether it was Manny just deciding on his own or whether someone, Mike Schilt or someone, kind of got in his ear a little bit, Manny clearly came at the at the at this season with a different perspective Correct. in terms of – just production and attitude. And he did he does get his numbers, but it's a different and it he sets the tone and it's a different vibe this year. No doubt about it. All right, we've got some tickets to give away. Another four pack for the uh, San Diego Mojo. They're San Diego's new pro volleyball team. If you want to check them out at Viejas Arena on April 23rd, they'll be taking on the Omaha Supernovas. And we're giving away a four pack of tickets right now to the third caller at 833 288 0973. Third caller, 833 833- 288-0973. Mojo Supernovas tickets, VA Haas Arena. You can get your own tickets to check them out at provolleyball.com. Very simple website URL for you. All right, final segment of Men and Woods of the Week. Polly has uh, put together the extended mix oh my yeah, gosh. of things Ben likes. So we'll get the whole package to wrap up our week before... Annie and Elston coming up next on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
What's everybody got this weekend? Well, we'll talk about that here. Coming the answer up. is what don't. I yeah, it is a busy weekend, weekend for all of us. Mm-hmm. We will uh, lay that out and get you to things Ben likes. And Annie and Elston coming up at 10 o'clock this morning. Of course, Padres baseball. Tonight, Eco Water SoCal pregame show with Sam Levitt at 540. Padres and Toronto Blue Jays at 640 tonight. Uh, we'll talk about all of it after a check of traffic here on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danek. We still have this traffic alert on the eastbound 54 at the 805 overturned big rig blocking the right lane. Looks like they may have had to shut down the south 805 to the eastbound 54 transition to clear that, but I'm not showing a lot of slowing in the area, so can't confirm anything. Also, collision in the North County, westbound 78. This is right before Rancho Santa Fe. Got the slow lane block, couple vehicles involved, tow trucks rolling up. I'm Kelly Danik with Benner Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. You know what I'm doing this afternoon? Golfing. Yes, but it's business golf. <laughs> oh, boy. I've never really done business golf. I know a lot of people do Here's like the thing. Here we go. business golf. Like, get, try to get some stuff done while you're on the golf course. I've always just played golf to play golf. You are... It's fun for me. I don't want I don't want to tell you what you can and can't do. Put limitations on you. You're incapable of playing business golf. I think I'm that probably very is good true. at it. Yeah. I'm very Paulie's very you good at it. You can schmooze and Paulie discuss and, I, and I get locked into the golf. I I'll forget doing any of the business whatsoever. <laughs> Paulie and I have planned no. entire weeks on the golf yeah. course of content oh, and yeah. ideas. And then we like, Ben, what do you think about this idea? It's like, I actually had a seven iron there. Yeah. I probably should have switched balls there because this one's a low spin ball and I needed a high spin ball. And my, my putting was just a little bit off. And I'm like, why did I ask? Why did I ask? Why did That's I ask? Fair. So you are actually Maybe going, you should be playing golf I, I, today I, I prob- instead of me. I probably should No, have. just uh, we're going to be discussing the, uh, the Ben and Woods Open, yep. which we're still working on and hopefully have the announcement soon. But It's incredible Playing to a see. little uh, business golf this afternoon. Business. I, and then. I would do anything to just have a, uh, a camera on you the whole time. <laughs> See how much business. I feel like after you put out on eighteen, you're gonna be like, ah! I forgot to ask you about the, the whole uh, business part of the whole golf thing. <laughs> the business thing. No, that's fair. That's actually fair. I got a uh, I got a seals game tonight. All right. At yeah. uh, yeah. John Arena, uh, San Diego, with the coach who hates you. The coach who hates me. If you no. missed that story uh, earlier, we told it, but there was a game. He was coaching for another team, and th- it, the replay thing was screwed up all night. The shot clock was off, and he was furious, and he. <laughs> wrote on a whiteboard cheater and held it up and stared at me like a serial killer. And there's, we have a picture of it and I tweeted it this morning. I don't have any control over clocks or, or replay replays or anything. I believe you. I don't think you're a cheater. If you did have control over the replay though. I couldn't bring myself to do it. Could you? Cuz I like, wouldn't get I don't oh, want to like get you, caught. Like you knew the the was the seal scored a goal. You knew it was going to be overturned. So you just like pulled the plug on the re- replay machine, and they weren't able to, they, to overturn the call at the, the last second. The funny thing about the NLL is they can't move on with the game until they see two replays. You can't move on with the game. So if the replay thing's broken, and it was that night, you have to sit there and rot until they figure it out. <laughs> it's the and usually, so I'm in the. I'm Sorry, in the, we're in our second hour of yeah, a replay delay bro, tonight. <laughs> I'm in the booth, and you know me. What do I have to do every twenty minutes? PP. Oh, and yeah. I just want to get out. I would never delay the game one second longer than it had to be because every time you see me at the Seals game, there was a game a point where I would like I have to like hold hold with my hand like my kids do. I am holding it going please end this game. I'm begging. I I there's nowhere to go. I'm in the penalty box. So the Vancouver Warriors coming tonight. He's now their head coach. Should be a good game. I mean, we're not playing for a whole hell of a lot other than like the integrity of the league, right? You still have to still have to run Uphold, your best. Yeah, for yeah, all the other for teams. All the other you teams. have to give your best effort. That's exactly right. right. And uh but I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna be me, banging yeah. on the glass, having fun. You can get your tickets at sealslax.com if you've never been to a game. It's so much fun. And then tomorrow night, I'm doing uh I'm emceeing a little charity work on the side, Ben, uh at Ale Smith, our beloved Ale Smith for the Anvil of hope uh 80s party and it's uh we're raising money it's anvil of hope.org tickets are still available 6 to 10 p.m 21 and over food raffle live music i am uh, dressing up it's an like 80s. in a tuxedo no, dressing up no it's the less you poly it's an 80s party so i'm dressing up as like can't wait as Come like on. as like one of the beastie boys 
So I have like a Run DMC shirt. I've got a chain. I've got a bucket hat. What's a Run DMC shirt? A shirt from the band Run DMC. Just like a T-shirt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not they, like they a didn't wear of, like no, specific shirts. Like, that like they pirate wore. shirts or something. Yeah. I was no, sure. no. 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 <laughs> I wasn't sure if there was like a the style puffy of shirt. shirt. Yeah. No, 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 no. I was missing. It's like a tracksuit shirt or something. Or what so, are we going here? I'm doing that. Do you need pictures of that, please? Okay. I'll send you guys pictures. I have no problem embarrassing myself, as you know. But I'm excited about that. Um, you know, try to raise some money and, okay. and do some good I things. I think uh, Shelly and I are going to go to the game tomorrow night yep. just for fun. Uh, game two of the series. And then... Uh, Paul, you got anything before Sunday? We're all going to be at the game on Sunday. Be at the correct? game on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, don't have a whole lot of plans, actually, this weekend. Not going to any games? Or you, Sunday. 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 Yeah. Sunday's a long day. It's going to be a long day. We have a Tier, tier one, 1 game. baseball in the morning. If you'd like to come to that. Padres baseball in the afternoon, and then I get to play in a radio show at night. If you're just a huge Woods fan, I'll see you at the game tonight. And then I'll see you at the Anvil of Hope tomorrow. And then at the <laughs> Tier 1 baseball game on Sunday at Vista Sports Complex and at then, 9 a.m. by that point, you'll have the restraining order. Correct. <laughs> Correct. My wife, who loves me, is she is coming to this. I was going to say, she's not coming to any of those. She is coming to the Seals game with the kids tonight, so um, which will be fun. And uh, but now it's it's a busy weekend. So and then you're out a couple days next well, week. I have to. So I have to actually start my vacation prep this weekend because I don't. I work Monday all day Monday and Tuesday, and then I'm leaving right after the, not even after the show during the show on Wednesday. So I really have to kind of have have my clothes cleaned and packed for the most part by the time the weekend's over because I don't have much of a time to do it. So I'll have to do some vacation prep this weekend as well. And, like, you mean the washing your clothes? Yeah, just having the right – I want to have the right clothes, like, ready for golf and I've everything. N- I have never packed a suitcase more than 12 hours ahead of my Really? Trip. Never. Never a couple days before? You just no. want to make sure? Night before. Because you before, don't want to – day before. But you don't want to then – you wear something, you realize, oh, I shouldn't have worn that. I wanted to take that on the trip. That I'll plan in my head. I'll, okay, but you I can do that in your yeah, head. Because I'll just head. pull out the things. Okay, don't wear these because I need to take these. And I don't want them to be dirty. I don't want to have to do laundry again at the last minute. Yeah. So I, I pull I, out the – Which I get. Important get. stuff. So you're going to just, you're going on a golf trip. All you're going to have Correct. to do is just bring golf some collared shirts and – can't wear shorts, I bet, where you're playing. I think we can. It's it's desert. It's, it's hot. Yeah. I think they are okay with okay. shorts. Uh, although, uh, I don't think it's going to be hotter than like 85, That's which is great. not bad at all. And so you leave on not bad. Thursday. Wednesday. You leave on Wednesday. 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 Uh, you're leaving like an hour early? No, 9 a.m. on Wednesday. So you might as well just not come in on Wednesday. No, no, I'm, we're doing then, a, we're doing mock the draft on Wednesday. We are, but the pro- when you go on vacation, you uh, it's, it's not only are you missing the days that you're actually off, it's the day before. Right. The day of. Which is fine. If you don't want to come in on Wednesday, then I'll just be bad on Tuesday. But So then don't come in on <laughs> no, Tuesday. Then I'll just be bad on Monday. So just, we'll see you next I week. I guess we'll I'm see already you on vacation. Weeks. Yeah, I was going to say, we'll just see you in two weeks. We were driving home. Yet Ben had to drive me home yesterday. He goes, just like this, out of nowhere. Eight more works until vacation. Oh, and I went, oh, we're dead. We're de- absolutely dead next week. Ben is going to be uh, checked out. Uh, most of next week. So it's going to be a long weekend, followed by a very, very long True. week. <laughs> True. True. Very excited. Maybe I should have checked out already, just right now. Yep. I could, could be completely checked out, and this last segment could just be a disaster, like it always it is. It always is. We could, we could have to apologize for this segment right now. It's at 9.45. Four-ish. Forgot oh, I didn't have it. He didn't have about really. it. I forgot it, too. I even Sorry. texted him. I said, Pete Fairbanks. We need Pete Fairbanks here. Yeah, we did. Here. 944. In our Damn last it. segment. We forgot. Gotta, we need to set our alarms or something just to make sure we get our Pete Fairbanks fix now every day at 944. Calvin said it's par for the course. I get it. I, it totally is. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I want to be here for you for four. I'll give you 330. Okay? I'll give you 330 is my best effort on Friday. That's all I got for you, man. <laughs> I thought you were queuing up for things Ben likes. No, no, I'm I like, wanted the well, Pete Fairbanks. What are you talking about? Yeah, I want to check my phone because I'm locked into the show. Yeah, guys, locked right into the show. Yeah, play it one more time. Pete, find it and play it because oh, it was God. the highlight. We need to we need to make this a habit at nine forty four. At nine forty four every day. I don't want to be forgetting this. I want this to be a regular thing at nine forty four every <sighs> so day. So badly. Yeah, we're so bad at this I too. Know. But I really want it to be our regular nine forty. No matter what we're doing, you stop down right there and boom, play Pete Fairbanks. Not gonna let it beat me up for, uh, you know, I'll maybe give it till ten. It's nine forty-four right now. I'll give it sixteen minutes of, of salt, and then we'll, you know, get back on the bump and, and figure it out. So good, dude. I love it. I love it so much. 
16 more minutes of sulk. There we go. Long we version. Go. Long version. I like good juicy sweet strawberries. I like a good marching band. I like a good thin pancake. I like a Nickelback song or two. Pizza I like a barbecue too. chicken pizza. I really like those seats. They're- I like a midnight buffet. <laughs> I kind of like the smell of soft scrub. I like more of a small derriere. I like cake. I like it, Sheeran. I like no. both a hamburger and a cheeseburger. cheeseburger. I like clocks. I like how I've kind of set up my life. I like grasshopper pie. And- oh, no, I like it creamy. I like good, firm banana. I like just looking out at the sea. I like eating. I like moist. I like curry. I like big butts. I like fried Brussels sprouts. I like more of a firm filling. I like corn. I like Nordstrom. I do like musicals. And I like pepperoni. I like nice hotels. I like Nick getting a start today. I like nuts. I like yeah. Steph Curry. I like that song. <laughs> I like Squirt. I like Saki. I like San Diego State. I like uh, Straight Up, Paul Abdul. I like the beef and broccoli. I like to mix it up. I like science experiments. I like that song. I like the crispiness of the waffle. I really like cheese. I like the little lunch meat. I like very straight lines. I like cannelloni. I like a well-crafted headline. I like brown sugar. I like maps. I'll say I like Justin Turner. I like going to golf games. I like diving into chores. I like sugar. I do like Butterfinger. I like blue and silver are not bad colors. I like the time change. I like Major League Baseball's new rule. I like the radio. I like geography. I like the knuckle method. I like Skippy. I mean, I like pie. And I like Bob Melvin. I really do. I like Jay Stingler, Stingler too. I like this day. I yep. like being right. I still do like movie scores. I like good food. I like maps. Right. I like when interviews can turn into organic conversation. I do like a Sofer's French bread pizza. I like having the wind go through my hair. I think I like shows that the characters have an arc. I like the full lettuce, tomato, onion yeah. experience as well. I like those kind of burgers. I like the big overflowing bag of fries. I like those little Smarties rolls. I liked what I saw from Seth Lugo. I liked his competitive fire. I like walking around between the different lands. Steve Kerr, though, I like that. I like living on the coast. I like watching Tiger still. I like the idea of that matchup. I liked what I saw in the preseason. I like the aloneness sometimes of Texas Hold'em. I like watching San Diego State basketball. I like those cashew buttered cashews. I like cold, clear sake. I like a lot of things. I like Chick-fil-A sauce. I just like rankings. I like Steve Winwood. I like pie gal poker. I like to be informed on subjects. I like Chicago. I like Tom Petty. I like the idea of another left-handed bat in the lineup for sure. I do like a good Matt Damon film. I like being on the same page. I like broccoli. I like Brussels sprouts. I like a lot of things. I I like this shirt. I like Wipeout. I liked my omelet. Oh my I like San Diego State at home. <laughs> I like when a baseball player can be more than just a baseball player. I like vanilla. I like the atmosphere. I like the felt on a poker table. Just kind of how it feels under your fingers when you're there. I yeah. like rhubarb pie. I like the window seat. Changing the subject. I like that. I like just the standard yellow peak. I like how San Diego State's playing right now. I like finer things. I like calling a game. I like fiction more than nonfiction. Just like the cream. I actually like playing golf with other people. I've liked everything I've seen so far from Mike Schill. I like Mexican food. I like just the solar system. (laughs) I do like steak. I like specifics. I like going to Seven Mile Jesus. Casino during the day. I like that people are there having a good time. I like my new eating schedule. I liked what I was eating. Yeah, I like the variety of the menu at Sammy. I do like a good midnight buffet. Holy cow. I, let me just say, if you uh, if you didn't hear you, your name mentioned at this point, you probably should start to worry. Seriously. <laughs> Holy cow. Wow. What was what felt longer, that or Bob Dylan's fourteen minute opus? This is that much more played. enjoyable. Yeah, I enjoyed that very much. I did not. I it was, was sweating scary. profusely the entire seventeen minutes. Ben is out Thursday and Friday. I'm ready for the next Bob Dylan bit. Okay, have fun with that. I'm going to something. I'll cook something up. It'll be different. Oh man, man that was long and awesome. Thank you, Ben, for liking so many things. All right. Everybody have a uh, really good weekend. I hope you like your weekend (laughs) out there. I hope to. Annie and Elston are coming up next for our executive producer and imaging director, Paul Reindel. For Stephen Woods, I'm Ben Higgins. Have a great rest of your Friday all weekend long. We'll talk to you again Monday morning at 6 a.m. right here on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. So long, everybody.